Supplements don't make a big difference at all, except for maybe a few. In fact, one supplement that uh, I didn't think was likely to improve athletic performance and indirectly help muscle building and fat loss, probiotics, believe it or not, probiotics have been shown to reduce oxidative stress, improve markers of fatigue, help with recovery, um, and then of course help with nutrient absorption, which helps with muscle recovery, muscle growth, and fat loss. Very interesting. So probiotics are up there when it comes to supplements that can help with your athletic performance. You know, I've just yeah. been reading studies on this and uh, very few supplements actually make a difference. This is, I mean, we talk about this all the time. Creatine is up there. Supplements that help fill nutrient gaps. But probiotics, there's beneficial bacteria that we've now identified that have been connected to, of course, improve digestion, reduce inflammation, improve cognitive function, reduce anxiety. Those are all have now been shown in studies. Now we're seeing improvements in athletic performance, in particular fatigue and recovery. Um, Crazy. So, yeah, it's wild, right? It's just, yeah, it's so interesting. Like, it just keeps reinforcing how, like, important gut health is on so many different levels. Like, of course, of course, that's going to make a uh, an impact on your performance and how your body's overall function. Yeah, is. totally. Do you, do you think probiotics is becoming like the new multivitamin? Well, they already did. They already did become that, I think. Um, I think we're already at that point. Now we're getting to the point really? where- Really? I don't know about that. Oh, man. Multivitamins, like- Bro, probiotics are everywhere. Like, they're everywhere. They, they are yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But I mean, and and as a multivitamin, but I feel like the general population that's not even to health and wellness knows to take a multivitamin. I think that's been uh, promoted oh, by doctors yeah. and like commercially yeah. for so long. Like you, I, you don't see uh, probiotic commercials like you see, you know, women's one a day, men's one a day type oh, of multivitamin. Man, it's such a huge market now, and you know, even, it's, I mean, it is growing. Like even crazy. our our general practitioner doctors are rec recommend them for the babies. They tell us to add, wow. yeah, give us probiotics for the little ones. Um, formula for infants includes now beneficial bacteria. Uh, they have one for different types of health. They're identifying different strains of bacteria for things like. Um, they're, believe it or not, there's strains that are improve vaginal health. There's strains that improve skin health. Um, there's strains that seem to be more important for men than for women and vice versa. So it's really interesting. It is, there's still lots of science that needs to, to be discovered in terms of like what exactly is going on. But we do know there's specific strains that seem, that seem to have just these beneficial effects across the board. Now I have personal experience. Mine's pretty extreme though, right? I, I have, I, my gut health can go real south. Or like it's been recently, but be really good. Like right now, it's really good. The difference between for me, bad gut health and good gut health in terms of athletic performance, profound. Mm -hmm. It's profound. It's like ten pounds of lean body mass. Well, isn't that, it really? It's the balance more than anything. Because like if you do have like overgrowth, that's not really a good thing to just keep adding like probiotics into the mix. That's a good point, right? So if you have like SIBO, yeah. And you just throw more bacteria at it. It might not be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I mean, I've talked to some people because that is like to to the point of it being sort of this um, uh, thought that like it's going to help like in any situation. Like just put probiotics in there. Yeah. Like because uh, some people have like uh, talked to me about their gut being off and this. I'm like, you should probably get it tested first, you know, beforehand. And yeah, and I've had I've had because uh, I've tried. I mean, no no exaggeration. Probably thirty different types of probiotics. Some of them I notice an effect. Some of them I notice nothing. Some of them give me a negative effect. Yeah. Some of them are negative. Um, Seed, which is a company we work with now, that's the one that I consistently get excellent, excellent results, which is one of the reasons why I work with them. When we first met them, they gave us samples and I'm like, oh, I'll judge this because I'm sensitive to this stuff. That one's always, always uh, a positive effect, but um, pretty interesting, you know, athletic performance. So athletes should definitely, here's the other thing too. Athletes tend to suffer from gut issues at higher rates than the average person. Mm. And it's because of the systemic inflammation and damage that comes from hard training sessions. Mm. And then athletes also tend to eat right after they train. Mm -hmm. So you have all this uh, inflammation that's going on, which almost sets the gut up for potential things like um, uh, leaky gut syndrome, right? And then they feed themselves right after. That's what you're encouraged to do, eat right afterwards. And uh, probably a bad uh, a recipe for, you know, kind of bad results. And if you talk to like hardcore athletes, people that really push themselves to the limit, um, like uh, marathon runners, uh, you know, triathletes, people who go do these insane workouts, 
the rate, the percentage of them that suffer from poor gut health immediately afterwards is like through the roof. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's like accepted that you're going to have bad gut health post, you know, race or whatever. Yeah. So one of those supplements, I think that should be up there now with ones that are probably a good idea for people to take uh, on a regular basis. But I agree with you, Justin, getting your gut health uh, tested is ideal because then you can be more specific. Do you think the true. average yeah. athlete tends to restrict and binge a lot too? Because I think, I think back to playing sports and like real, especially as a kid, real easily, I could get caught up of playing game after game. Yeah. Four hours, six hours, not eating and then feeling starving and yeah, then like totally. eating 3000 calories in one sit sitting and stuff like that. I, I'm sure that's a, a more common than not behavior with most athletes, which I'm sure would also perpetuate the issues. Oh with yeah, too, totally. I mean, uh, how much that have, would stress the digestive system. Have you got, you know, when you guys train marathon, you guys ever train mar marathon athletes mm -hmm. afterwards, what they eat. It's like, it's like a bodybuilder post show. Yeah. Like just feed myself as Anything much as possible. Anything I can get in, it's, uh, yeah, it'll just consume it. Yeah, so that's a bad combination, right? Like hard workout, inflammation, stuff myself with a bunch of, you know, not easily digestible or terrible food. Uh, probably a bad idea. But I agree with you, Adam. I When when you work with um, athletes, they tend to do that. They'll play, 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 play. So they'll go four, five, six hours with nothing except for maybe Gatorade. Yeah. And then after the workout, they go for the burger, pizza, pancakes, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, probiotics make a difference with athletic performance. So um, try it out for yourself. See if it works. Today's workout program giveaway is MAPS Strong. Here's how you enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won MAPS Strong. Also, we're running a huge workout program sale right now. We put together some of our most popular workout programs that require no or little workout equipment that also um, help you work out with a limited time. In other words, those of you that are time restricted will love this bundle. Here's what's included in the Time Crunch bundle. Maps 15 Minutes, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and the ebook Eat for Performance. Normally, all of those would cost you over $300, but right now, only you can get this all in the Time Crunch bundle for $99.99. This promotion ends at the end of this month, so if you're interested, you should probably get signed up right now. Go to, click on the link, excuse me, at the top of the description below. So there's a link at the top of the description. Click there and you can get signed up for the Time Crunch Bundle. All right, here comes the show. So I have a, uh, I have a dad question for you guys. It was in, inspired by uh, Justin this weekend. I know he went up to Truckee and uh, I saw a video of his, his boys at the Woodward spot. The, where the trampolines and stuff are, which is an area I wanted to go for a while now, and he actually went down there. So I'm yeah, curious. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Yeah, I want to hear all about it. But what what uh, <clears throat> what inspired the question was us watching his boy on the trampoline and just being like so in awe of his little boy, like doing like. And I'm looking at it. There was a time in my life where I tried to get good at that because uh, when I was really getting heavy into wakeboarding, this is like eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade when I really got heavy into wakeboarding and snowboarding. I really wanted to get good at like backflips and like tricks. And one of the th ways they teach you to train, like all the train, I used to follow the training videos, everything is like you get on your board and stuff and you, you practice that shit on a trampoline and like, Oh really? Yeah. And I was never good at it. I'd never, mm -hmm. I was, it was always tough. Like upside down tricks for me, was always really difficult. And, um, I remember that I, it was a frustrating time in my life cause I was passionate about it and I, and I failed at it a lot. Um, so seeing his boy do that, I was going like, damn, I, I can't do that. I never could do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about like you guys with your your kids that are a little bit older and you too, Doug, and even Andrew maybe because Andrew's got some that are getting up there in age. What, do you remember the first time you saw one of your kids do something that you couldn't do? Oh, yeah. And like, how did that make you feel? Do you remember what it was? Like, I I, like, I, I thought about that. Like, that hasn't happened to me yet, obviously, because Max is very little. I could do most of everything he can do. <laughs> but, you know, at one point, they get to an age where they probably get, like, hyper-focused on something, uh, whether it's intellectually or, you know, athletically. And then you see something for the first time them do, and you go like, oh, shit, I don't know if I could do that. Dude, I, could, I stopped being able to help my son with his math homework in seventh, <laughs> oh, seventh grade. <laughs> he's like a math wizard, right? He's, yeah, like, he's like the I most, bet. he's in like AP calculus or whatever now, but I remember like he was doing like algebra one or two. Oh, do you I'm remember the moment? Do you remember oh, like yeah, the, the moment of like, you know? Yes. I, I never had to, he never asked me for help. Uh, but so, you know, that's to be fair, but I remember he had his homework and he was doing it and I was like looking over his shoulder 
And I was like, I hope you don't have to ask me for help. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to help you. Get over my, <laughs> you're fucked. You know, yeah. I mean, does, does, a, does a, a feeling of insecurity happen? A uh, pride? Do no, you, do I was you, proud. Like, yeah. is, is it a proud moment? Yeah, I was yeah. proud. I would imagine that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would imagine it's You like know why? Because it's your kid. So yeah. it's, right. it's still narcissistic. Yeah. You know, you're not doing it, <laughs> I but I my proxy. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're yeah. my, you're my child, <laughs> so therefore, yeah. I'm responsible somewhat. Yeah. Do you remember yours, Justin? Well, I mean, you brought that up. Yeah, because it was funny just me sitting there and like kind of observing and in. Uh, so we're on this upper deck and you could kind of watch all the kids like playing and interact and do their thing out there, like all these trampolines and all this like cool stuff for them to climb on and jump and flip. And uh, so me and Courtney are just kind of sitting there and, and we're just kind of listening to all the other parents. And so and I, I catch like some of the other parents are, are like pointing like, do you see this kid out there doing all these flips and they did this twist and like, and I look at it's Everett, you know, that's so I'm sick. Just like, that's gotta be so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it was cool. Cause it was like, too, you saw uh, some of the extreme athlete kind of coaches that are there and they, like you said, they're practicing moves with, with snowboards or with, um, with skateboards and and so they do that in the big trampoline. They also have parkour and they do crazy stuff. Oh wow! And so Everett was kind of watching them do like the crazy parkour stuff and kind of watching. And he goes and he attempts it, kills it first time. And then they had this one. Um, it was like a tower that you can climb up to, and it it was probably like like two stories high. And you you jump off of there into this huge foam pit and it's like it's fucking terrifying like, it's, <laughs> it's really high up there and like there's no kids going up of it and uh there was some of the some of the coaches there were like doing these jumps and and, and flips off of it and so he saw that and so he climbs up and he looks and he's just kind of like crawling towards the edge looking down and he's like Ugh. and i'm like i elbow court and i'm like look dude he's gonna do it and he he looks at it and then he just without even like standing all the way up just gets up psh, jumps off and i was like oh <laughs> it freaked me out <laughs> like it, that was one of those i was like wow i wouldn't have the balls to do that like yeah. it's just like it's another level so yeah i was it was definitely that. And, um, I mean, Ethan too on, he, he's not maybe quite as fearless on that level, but he's, he's getting so sharp at all his moves. He does this one. It's like, um, I think they call it a Randy where, and he was practicing this and he was there with his friends. So it was funny. Cause he was like showing off and flexing quite a bit because <laughs> his friend does like motocross. Yeah. And so he like brought him into his environment and he's like, all these trampolines. Let me show you. Show you. Yeah, <laughs> dude, check this out. <laughs> and so he jumps and he, he, he like jumps and then spins and then flips and then lands in like the foam pit. And like, he's been practicing this. It looks sick. Oh yeah. And so he did that. I caught it on, on film. Uh, but you can see his friends like, whoa, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to go to Hawaii, meet up with you guys because our my daughter's 13, right? Your son's 13. Mm -hmm. That's when they try and act cool in front of each other. Oh, so I can't wait to see <laughs> if, your son, <laughs> if your son tries, if he tries to like <laughs> act cool. And do he, like, he will. He yeah. will. He's in that phase. I'm going to love like, it, dude. I'm going to yeah. love it. Yeah. They're all trying to figure out like, uh, you know, who they are and whatnot. And like, he's, he's trying to be cool guy right now. Yeah, like Cause at the same age, you know, yeah. and she's a girl. So yeah. he's going to be like, Oh, yeah, watch this. Yeah, he'll try and impress me. Do some flips sure. and shit. Yeah. yeah, dude, totally. Yeah. Now, Andrew, well, we'll you're to to too daughter. young. So you <laughs> yeah. probably haven't yeah. seen this yet. Have you? Um, so nine and two are my kids. And, my nine-year-old Gabriel, he's he's like J Justin's kids. He's definitely more fearless than I was, much more of an athlete than I was at his age. I'd say those are the biggest things that sent out to me. And but you haven't seen him yet do something on the baseball diamond that you can't do still right now at like your age. Um, no, and football more specifically. That's the sport that he shines. Oh, really? And yeah, and I didn't really gain my confidence in football until I was like 14, 15. He yeah. just got there like he's like eight years old. Oh uh, yeah, so that's it's, great. It's, it's just you know, I feel proud to see it. That's yeah. great. That's yeah. so. That's gotta be so cool. I, you know, I'd never crossed my mind until I saw that video that Justin did. I thought, oh, you know what? I know Justin's fucking ass can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I mean, Ethan I, eats exotic foods and stuff. I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> like, like, what are you eating? Like he's like, he'll grab just like an oyster and just <laughs> and starts chewing it. I'm like you don't chew it. Like. Ew. I'm well, like Ethan's like a crazy reader. I've seen him knock <clears throat> books out that are like, like I, oh, he, yeah. he could probably Voracious knock a, a reader, book yeah. out faster than I could for sure. And yeah. Yeah. So I've seen yeah, I him. can't do that. You, yeah. What about you, Doug? You see Bree doing any? Well, about five years ago, her mom put her in golf 
And oh. so she was going to golf lessons. So one day I take her to the driving range and she had this beautiful swing. Oh, I no mean, way. totally effortless. And I mean, I, I took up golf when I was in my early 20s and I was a hack for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's like, well, she has real talent. Here. I didn't know Brie could play golf. She doesn't. She doesn't. She oh, was also, I put her in tennis, much better swing than mine. Oh, no. uh, yeah. She just doesn't want to do it. Oh, no, that's good. Okay. This has got to be frustrating no. too, as a, a parent. I couldn't imagine like, so Especially this could have a beautiful, swing like I couldn't like imagine that. watching my son, like be really good on the court, but then uninterested and, yeah, and, and like, uninterested to be like, Oh, that's, I mean, that's, like, crazy. That, that's been Bree's story. So oh, like, she has a real crazy. knack for like languages, good ear for that. And I, I maybe cause I pushed her too hard. I mean, I had her in Chinese and she was doing Vietnamese and, yeah. and a bunch of different languages <laughs> and she has, you know, beautiful accent, everything, but she just has no interest. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. I, you know, you, you get, you know, as a man, obviously you're competitive, right? But with your own kids, it's different. Like I'd be competitive, but you're happy when they beat. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't think that. I mean, I had to ask it because who yeah. knows? Maybe it maybe does drop some insecurity for some people. Like if it, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are some parents that really wish that they they were able to do that, and they see their kid, and there's a little bit of insecurity. But for me, it would be a sense of pride. It would I would never. Think. Yeah, I remember the first I time like, I beat my dad at wrestling. That was hard for me, not for him. He was so happy. Yeah, yeah. I was 18, and I caught him in a submission, and he tapped out, <laughs> which I'd never been able to do yeah. before. And he was so like, he was beaming and I was so sad. <laughs> yeah, your hero. You uh, just yeah, beat like, your he, hero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I beat Superman, you know? Like, totally. My dad's like, you know, oh man, uh, that's, a, that's a good time. That's funny. I know. Speaking I, of family stuff, dude, I got to tell you guys, it's so weird. I have this weird observation. I love you guys' uh, opinions on. So, you, you know, my grandfather recently passed away and my, I went to my mom's house last night. My grandma was there and she's holding like this little like silk bag. And she goes, here, your grandfather wanted you to have this. So- they're at the house, like cleaning, cleaning stuff out. Mm. So she gave me, or he left me, he told her when he dies, he wants me to have his pinky ring. So he's got like this gold pinky ring with like diamonds on it. And uh, I, it's loose on my middle finger and it fit snug on his pinky ring, Damn, on his wow. pinky. Is it just me or these old school guys, their fingers are just, because my dad's like that too. Just well, like, so I, like, I like muscular, like that's fingers. That's working with your like hands. Back in the day. It's yeah. gotta that's be. working yeah. with your hands for sure. It's got to be. Because then my, then my the son, I what? showed my son, yeah. and he could fit like three of his fingers inside. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, we're it's going backwards. Yeah, I know, I know. We're getting skinny. Bro, on his pinky, I put it on my middle that's finger. Crazy. And it was like loose. Like what the hell? What did they I do? Gar wow. I guarantee it's, it's like It's got to be. My stepdad's like that, who was in construction his whole life. Just Yeah, calloused and thick and his handshake is so like naturally it's yeah. crazy yeah. it's got to be that, and he's right? not like a bear big, he's not a buff <laughs> dude at all he's got forearms and hands it's because of Ed working with his hands for his entire life i mean i worked life. out my whole life but it's not the same it's it not even close not to the same, the same thing no yeah. i mean you talk about it all the time that's the that's the hack on the frequency thing right like you could lift weights hard 7 days a week mm -hmm. for 1 hour those guys are working 8 hours a day with their hands Always. You know, for their whole life more yeah. more than 8 hours a day 12, right right yeah, 12 so 15 hours for a day. sure yeah cuz she gave it to me and i put it on now will you will you wear it i would wear it you know, I would totally it's, rock it's that. It's super gaudy. It's okay. Think of it. Think <laughs> yeah, of it but like, okay. Okay. Here's the thing. There's a difference between you going out and like buying yourself like a you know a gold chain that says like yeah. Sal or something. No, like, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do something with it. Down. <laughs> but having that's a oh, that's pay, like a really pay, cool pay thing that. that's been passed down. It is. And it so is. I, to me, that's something that I would wear, even though I wouldn't probably buy a gaudy ring like that for myself. But I would wear that because I I'm thinking about from. sizing it and wearing it on my pinky. That or like a necklace, Sal. That's the other thing I was thinking. Yeah, that might be the move. Yeah, just wear it on a necklace. Like a cool necklace. Because I, I mean, I saw and I, you know, got me all emotional because I, you know, I knew I used to, he used to wear it all the time. He left stuff to my brother, my other cousin, and he had a ring that said GV on it for his initials, Giuseppe Visconti. That's my cousin's name, so he got that. Oh ring. yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, so anyway, maybe I'll get it sized and put on my pinky, or I'll wear, I think a necklace probably be, be the way to go. I mean, I would wear it. I yeah. would wear it on your pinky. I you mean, you would. I should show you. I mean, you I'll, I, I'll yeah. show you a picture of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably that's like a, it. Yeah, I totally, that's I totally a boss would, move for sure. sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had some for you guys that I thought was really interesting. So they did this. Uh, they did a survey on twenty thousand millionaires. Mm. Okay, twenty thousand millionaires. Uh, take a guess at the top five careers of millionaires are. Of millionaires? Yeah. Now so is this top so net worth or income? Does it not let say? No, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't specify. I imagine that okay. it would be. It would be net worth. I mean, it was just twenty thousand random. So you probably have both in there. I'm okay. sure you have net. Does worth. Does entrepreneur count, or is it more specific than that? More specific than okay. that. Yeah. 
So they're top <laughs> the top five careers of millionaires, over 20,000 million, random millionaires were asked. So randomly. So it could have been what you said. I would, I mean, I mean something in the medical field. Doctors, yeah. lawyers. Something in the medical field, something in, in finance, finance, something in law. Sure. Okay, lawyers, only one that you guys hit that's that's wow. Uh, wow. that's on that. So you got guesses, or if not, I'll, I'll list them off. Uh, um, and by the way, lawyer was number five, so it's the lowest one of the five. Engineering. Wow. Are these huh? regular engineers professions? number one. Oh, engineers. Engineer. engineer is number one. Petroleum engineer? It doesn't say specific. Oh, because you do software engineer in the mix? Sure, sure. Yeah. So okay. that would be in there. So engineer was number one. Attorney was five. Guesses for two, three, and four. You won't guess. Accountants? Yeah. Uh, CPAs? CPAs number two. Mm -hmm. Good job, okay. Doug. Wow. CPAs number two. You definitely ain't going to get three. Uh, uh, egg farmer with the price of eggs. <laughs> I, I would hope investment advisors. Right no, so here's three and four. Three yeah, and four you probably won't get. Managers. Three is teacher. Okay. No. No. What? Yes. Where? You know, I, I, I can believe that because they don't make a lot of money. And so they learn how to be very frugal with That's the money my, they do make. My, my, uh, friends, my friends that I have that are teachers, I have several friends in my, in my group that are, are teachers. And I'll tell you what, they have the, some of the best money habits out of mm -hmm. all my friends. Uh, so they, they've, they've built good habits because they don't make a lot of money. And, means, yeah. and they also, when I think they get good deals on house loans. They do, so they get special deals. if you get into being a teacher by 25 to 30 years old, by 30, you probably have bought a house. Hmm. And so there's a good chance that that house is now Property worth. Property went up. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of millionaires in the Bay Area that, are net worth millionaires just because they bought their houses 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah, and, and this uh, wasn't like one or the other. It wasn't like income versus right, net. Right. And so it was random. So I'm sure you got a little bit yeah. of a mix of both. Hmm. But I still thought that was interesting that a teacher would be in the top What's three. What's the other one? Did we say Last one, one, fourth was management. So it goes oh, number okay. one, engineer. Number two, CPA. Number three, teacher. Number four, management. And number five, mm. attorney. Interesting, <clears throat> isn't that? Yeah, because it's kind of funny you don't see financial planner in there, right? But, you know, <laughs> Katrina, Katrina guess like uh, you know a day trader or or yeah. stockbroker, right. like and those weren't. In I wonder, but you know what? What that reminds me of is we talked a little bit about the the you know drug world stuff like that. Fa fast money it comes in and out, yep. Yep. so people that in in professions, and this is on both the black market and and regular is. You get used to making so much, you tend to spend like that too. Mm -hmm. Well, so. this is like so when pro impulsive. athletes go bankrupt. That's right. Like that. Right. But yeah. Because I would like to see something that shows net worth versus income. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Like my parents, who, you know, not very much education, poor immigrants on paper are millionaires because they bought their house in San Jose, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but they're not, they never made even nor near anything like that. You know, the part, though, that what I like about that, though, is what this highlights is that, you know, anybody in any profession, even as 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 well, everybody knows teachers are underpaid. It's probably yeah. the number one choice if you say, what, what profession is underpaid? Everybody say teacher. Right. So the most underpaid profession that everybody would agree on is top three in millionaires. Mm -hmm. So that it's not, you getting financial freedom is not necessarily attached to your income like as many people would think it is. In mm -hmm. fact, that, I mean- No, that, it's that, actually that quite rare. It's actually quite rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, along those lines, um, I had done a post and I had people commenting <laughs> on, um, on that post and it was something along the lines of like having kids or whatever. And people were like, oh, it's too expensive these days. Everything's so expensive. It was so easy- when my grandparents uh, were trying to make it or whatever. That's so false. It's so wrong. The We don't compare apples to apples when we look at you know past generations to now. If you compare apples to apples, if you live the way your grandparents live, in other words, you have one car, you don't have a TV, you don't have a microwave, you don't eat out, uh, you do all those expenses, you don't have your cell phone, you are. it's easier today than it was back then. The difference is, Today, we have so much stuff that we think is essential, ne that's necessary, that we spend money on. And so we think it's so expensive. It is expensive because you have a bunch of shit that you pay for mm -hmm. where your grandparents didn't have that stuff. Like they didn't eat out. They had one car. My, my, my parents had one car while I was a kid for forever. Yeah. And it, you know, they didn't have uh, tons of t TVs in every bedroom. They didn't have they didn't 10 have, streaming services. They didn't have any of that stuff. Yeah. So if you do them, if you actually do the math, it's less expensive today, far less expensive today than it was in previous generations. The difference is we yeah. just have a is, bunch is, of shit. Isn't that always been the case though? I mean, that's been the, tr I mean, you go back 40 years, the 40 year, people 40 years ago would have said that about 40 years prior yeah. to that. I mean, just what happens, we continue to, to we, just add stuff we innovate, on the plate. yeah, we innovate and we add more and then mm -hmm. we want more and it's just like, 
I mean, become consumers. Yeah, this is kind of a weird transition to that, but it relates on some level. Like I just found out, and you guys might even be aware of this already, but there's like this whole underground society that lives underneath Las Vegas. I Wait, did I show you this or did I look at this separately? You might have seen the video that was kind of going yes. around that was what? like- Have uh, you heard of this? No. Going, what yeah, do they so, call them? So the, the mole people. Yeah. yeah what? Of, of, uh, like literally Las they live Vegas. underground? Bro, Uncharted. So there's all this uncharted- um, What? Septic or, or su sewer uh, Like tunnels, miles and miles and miles, miles of and they, tunnels. They have like Vegas. a king and everything they've nominated. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and oh. a lot of them- they haven't cool even been today. to the surface. Like they just stay down there and they live down there. Okay. So look at this. Mole people. Look at that. It's a thousand, estimated a thousand people find shelter in the storm drains underneath the city. What? So, so what Justin said, I also read that there's some people that have never seen the light of day, born, yeah. raised their whole lives underground. Yeah. What? So there was a guy that had a, a, a head camera on and he was riding his bike through these tunnels and there was someone commenting who's like, this guy's stupid. He should not be doing this. It's very dangerous. And he's writing. And at first, it just looks like tunnels. And then you see graffiti on the wall and writing on the wall. Basically like, hey, don't go yeah. down here. Yeah. And he kept yeah. going, kept going. Turn and back. You run into these weird societies and cities of people living underground. What? That's so weird, dude. I was looking at the I same know, thing this weekend. Bro, it reminds me, what movie was that with um, Sylvester Stallone where he's like, Ju was it Judge Dredd? Yeah. Or, yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> it was like, Demolition Man? Every, yeah, well, I, apparently this is a real thing. Like people are like, have made an entire like community. They have a government underneath. down there. Yeah. They have a guy who runs the whole show. They call really? King. Yeah. There's, someone's going to do like a documentary on so it. So bizarre. Yeah. Well, so there's stories. Interesting. There's stories of people who went down. Like they say, you go down there, you don't come you don't out. Come back. Unless if they, if you're not a part of society, yeah, that don't go down. They'll there. find out if you're like a journalist. What? Yeah, yeah dude. What? <laughs> That's creepy, right? I never heard of that. Is that yeah, creepy? I know. I just found out about it. What so if they evolve like, like over time? Now yeah. they have to obviously Bigger come eyeballs. out. Someone has to come <laughs> out and bring food in and out. Right? Yeah, I'm so, sure they have a runner. Yeah, yeah they got somebody have, goes up at night or whatever and goes get. Think food DoorDash for delivers down there? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> just drop it like <laughs> in the sewer. What's drain. your address? <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's like the Ninja Turtles, yeah. dude. Oh. Right? Is, yeah. Aren't they coming out? With the new yeah, Ninja they're Turtles? coming out the new like. Are um, they? It, yeah, some kind of animation. I think uh, Seth Rogen's doing it, and uh, apparently now they're they're giving April uh, assumed uh, ninja powers. Why? 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 Just because uh, you know, like so uh, she always got to change the story. She was a reporter. Now she's a ninja. Are they gonna have? Uh, <laughs> are they gonna have Casey Jones in there? I hope so. Remember Casey I, Jones? He was great. I liked uh, Casey. Yeah, Jones. With the, he had the hockey stick yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he was a badass dude. Ninja Turtles. Well, there were is. Great. There's uh, a there's, there's a, a movie from 1956 called The Mole People. That's not about them. That's just about no no. But yeah. uh, <laughs> <Doug>. <laughs> I was like, what? They've been down there since the 50s. Whoa, look, <laughs> they look it's like evolved. <laughs> it's like a B movie yeah. from the 1950s. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> the mole people are attacking. Oh, scary! Scary. I can't wait for the new Ninja, Ninja Turtles. I was, were you guys fans? I was so, a big fan. Yeah, yeah I, I was, was a big, big fan. I was a big. All right, hold on fan. a second. Who was your favorite Ninja Turtle? I, we can probably guess. guess for let each me other. Guess. Right? You'll be wrong on me. People guessed, you guessed, I think, before. This Leonardo time. for you. Raphael, no, dude. Oh, wow. You're no, Michelangelo. See, well, yeah, I was, my I, was, yeah. I was probably your favorite, Donatello. That was mine. Yeah, I was Donatello. Really? You like Donatello? Yeah. Really? He was a tech smart I one. I thought yeah. he was like a Leonardo. Yeah. I like. Actually, you're Leonardo. You're Donatello. Yeah, so as yeah, older, as an adult now, I would probably identify him more as like you guys up. Leonardo guy. But I, yeah. yeah, I love Donatello. Do you know why I like Donatello? Doug Splinter, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he is. I yeah. like his. I like his chill personality. That's why. Uh, yeah, he's laid back. He was. He was laid back. The other guys were like high strung to me. Oh uh, yeah. Right. That's true. Raphael was off the charts. Raphael always getting a fight. Yeah. yeah Michelangelo like, yeah, was yeah. like the ditzy. The ditzy one. Yeah, pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leonardo was like the the leader and stuff like that. Like uh, I get that. But I Donatello to me was just the laid back so, smart guy. So I like Donatello because on the Nintendo when you played, oh the bow staff was great. Yeah, when you yeah, played Ninja is, Turtles, yeah, that, that probably helped. Too. He had the longest weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had the longest range, and they all had the same damage creating power. So uh -huh. it was dumb. Why would well, you that pick was anybody? why it was sucked being uh, uh, Raphael. No, Michelangelo because like he got none shots. <laughs> Short ass like, nunchucks. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Like you gotta get like. <laughs> Like, yeah, real close to, to be effective. Hey, did I ever things. tell you guys? I don't think I ever said this story. I had a buddy who <clears throat> knew how to use nunchucks, right? He learned them, you know, because he was in martial arts. Yeah. And he had them in his car. And I asked him, I said, this is what we were like, 
I was like 19. I'm like, bro, you ever, I'm like, have you ever get out of your car? Those are so overrated. Bro. I'm sorry, I'm going to say. Yeah, hey, hey, he told me stories where dudes. Hey, if someone got out of a car. And was I, using them legit. No, and they just just had them. I'd I'll be just like. I'll kick a rock fuck? and I'll throw it at his head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he knew how to use them. Okay? I don't know. Yeah. Someone, well, if you if you have your own pair of nunchucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like they're doing and, dance and, moves and you, with and, it just to show you they're not And you drive with them. I don't know, dude. I'd be a little, I'd be a little hesitant. He told me stories, bro. He goes. Kind of like cauliflower here. You know what I'm saying? I'd see it and I'd be like. Uh, yeah, yeah, he'd be a little reserved. <laughs> he, yeah. he said, he's like, he's never gotten a fight because when he's gotten out of his car with the nunchucks and he does a few of the guys are like, I don't, I don't want none of this dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what are the, or came out, what was the what was yeah. the three-pronged sword thing that- uh, Oh, the side. Oh, the side. Yeah, that's yeah. A, Someone come out with one of those I'm things. Sorry, be like, have you guys ever- That dumb too. <laughs> have you ever- but Hold on, bro. Stop. You don't Size, even know what you're talking about. Size, <laughs> No, have you ever handled give one? Me a big old katana Aren't they made to fit blade. where you can almost have like a punch, like where it fits, like to where you you run the blade like this, and then you can hold hold around it like oh, that. Oh, uh, God! I used to be all into this stuff. Oh, obviously, yeah. do you know? Have you ever held a side? Do you know what a side is? Yes. Yeah. It's they, not they, a they, knife. No, I know, but it's like it's, it's like metal swords. batons. No, they're not swords. A long metal. It's like a. It has like two prongs like this and like one long yeah, one. Yeah, and they'll they'll hit you with it. It's like a baton. It's not like a- Oh, they hit you with it. Yeah, they Well, they the obviously use it wrong in uh, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my only point of reference. Well, they are Ninja Turtles. So, I mean, the whole thing is kind of fake. But <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, no turtles that fight. Dude, this is too much for me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, but they'll-, they'll I've been on a, You know, I've been on a kick, actually, with Max. So, like, when we watch cartoons together, I make him watch all the, like, the 80s and 90s, like, commercials. I was going through- Or cartoons. Yeah. I was going down the rabbit oh, hole the and, like, best. on YouTube and so that, because you can still find them. So, I can watch all these and it just brings back memories like i remember yeah like do you, i remember like you gotta you show can, him he-man you have when to you, when you can the even you know scene. i wasn't a big he-man guy what I, yeah small face very small face i was uh i mean I, it's a lot more like homoerotic than i remember oh it. come on it, it, is. <laughs> it is so have like, you watched it as an adult <laughs> no it's 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 definitely there's yeah, definitely some the power of Crystal. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> it's like, like the way he dresses and everything. I thought he was like, and when he's Adam, he's guy. got the tight shirt yeah. on, and he's so, got the, he's yeah. in a little loincloth, and like, yeah. so, come on, and he rides a you know a panther or whatever a cat, you know, <laughs> 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 meow. <Battle cat. laughs> yeah, it's a lot less tough than I thought. Yeah, yeah I'm just, I'm just hey, did you there. did you uh, finally finish watching? Did you watch the show that him and I were talking about last? The plane week? one? Yes, I haven't watched yeah, it. I haven't seen it. Oh, flight three seven. So we can talk about this, dude. The Malaysian flight. It, it is it, it, that was like one of the craziest documentaries Sasquatch I've ever seen they, Sasquatch the one that took it, them. I mean it might as well be like they they left us with no resolve bro and has that ever happened where we have 200 and something people from a commercial flight disappear and just never gone. we never find them and, and 20 the, years the later theories still theories have gone in so many directions it's it's insane so what I heard was is there was this cargo on the plane that it was some like that they didn't know about, yeah, and that they think that someone hijacked it to That's get the cargo, like episode three, yeah. So okay. they get into that, but like, yeah, to me, okay. So if you get through, and and I mean, they kind of went through a lot of different options of like, okay, so so one of the biggest pieces of evidence, and I think this was in the the first episode, but they were kind of going over that um, somebody had actually was was trying to call them, and from so they lost them off radar. And somebody actually from their cell phone was trying to call in, but they missed the call. Now, also, the um, the family members were trying to connect and call with them, and their phone was just kept ringing for a while. So they were trying to, like, ask the authorities, can we trace these calls? And they go, we don't have the technology to do that. <clears throat> Bullshit. Weird. Like, that, to me, it was like, okay, something is being covered up. Something is fraudulent. Like, there's no way. Because if you go through all of this stuff and the theories of it, like, oh, they must have, like, taken this like new course and then gone more towards the, um, you know, down south in, in, that, in that open ocean. It was like, it just got wild after Weird. That. Weird. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. Speaking of planes and stuff, my son was just in New York City with the, he went up there with his, uh, one of his groups in high school or whatever. He went to the 9-11 um, oh, that's uh, memorial. amazing, I hear, dude. Bro, he was telling me that I God, this will be so hard to see. I guess at the memorial, you can hear. Yes, you can put the headphones on and, and listen to calls. the phone calls and everything. Wow. I hear it's like crazy. I don't know, yeah, dude. dude, that'd be. That's what he said. He yeah. said it was because you know he was born after that yeah. happened, right? And yeah. He was telling me about it, and I'm like, well, tell was it crazy? And he goes, dude, it was uh, it was it was very heavy and emotional. He's like, mm -hmm. you're listening to these people calling. Honey, I love you. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. Or mm -hmm. there was one firefighter that went up and I guess there were like 40 voicemails left on his phone from family and friends 
from people wishing him well. Hope you're safe. I'm praying for you, whatever. And of course, he never made it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, that's so. I hear it's a beautiful memorial, <laughs> that's too. That's what he said. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be absolutely beautiful. And then it's like super powerful. Like oh. You can't go there and not oh, get emotional. It's, it's like, crazy. Oh. All right, I'm going to take a, a left here and talk about this very interesting study <clears throat> that just came out um, on um, atherosclerosis and endurance athletes. I'm going to I'm gonna read to you kind of what they found in one of these. It's pretty weird and wild, although um, I have some theories, and um, I think this will spark good conversation. So the title of the story was Lifelong Endurance Exercise and Coronary, Coronary, excuse me, Atherosclerosis. So what they found, this is a prospective observational cohort study of lifelong endurance athletes, late onset athletes and healthy and active but non-athletic men. So what they found was that lifelong uh, athletics was associated with more coronary plaques, including more non-calcified plaques in proximal coronary segments. So in other words, they had more plaques in their arteries than people who weren't endurance athletes. Wow. Now, here's the thing. I mean, I have theories on that. Well, here's the thing before you continue, Mm, because I I thought, I I know where you're going. I thought to myself, like, I wonder if they just overtrain the shit out of themselves cause lots of inflammation mm-hmm. and stuff like the that. Inflammation was probably But higher. here's the deal. They did not connect it to coronary coronary events. It was just the plaques. Mm. So they didn't show either they didn't show or they they look at it. They didn't address any of these in, these events. So this there's two two parts of this that um, I'd like to look deeper in. One is a were they actually getting more heart attacks and more events? If that's the case, then I would lean towards the overtraining, beat yourself up. You know, hardcore athletics is not, does not improve longevity. We've talked about this many times on the podcast. There's a way to exercise and eat for longevity. And there's a way to exercise and eat for high performance. They're both, there's a little crossover, but they're both not the same thing. I, I mean, I have some other theories around it too. Okay. Um, so I, I, I actually avoid talking about this because uh, one, it's super sensitive. Two, I'm not that athlete, so it's not like I'm picking on myself. You hear me like criticize bodybuilding a lot because yeah. I can. I've, I've been in the sport. Um, it's like criticizing myself, so I don't feel I feel okay about that. I don't come over and, and tramp all over like endurance athletes, but in my experience of training lots of endurance athletes, they have some of the poor relationships with food just like bodybuilders yeah. do. Many of them have to have a race in order to get themselves, and they use these crazy endurance to burn it, it off. To burn off. Mm-hmm. And they they binge, restrict, and mm-hmm. they're they have a lot of them have eating disorders. So there's a lot of dysfunctional eating that happens in that that cohort of people, just like there is in body. That doesn't mean this is not an overgeneralization that all of them, I know there's except just like in bodybuilding, there's some people that have good relationships with exercise and food. But is it I would make the case that there is a greater percentage of people that fall in that category, just like they're in bodybuilding than the general population. Yeah, I would, mm. I, I've would. i had the same experience and yeah. they're very likely to overtrain. <clears throat> the, the clients that I trained that did lots of endurance races, almost all of them were chronically overtrained and all of them showed signs of overtraining, mm-hmm. like uh, weathered, uh, you know, accelerated aging, um, joint uh, problems and stuff like that. Now, here's the other side of it though. Um, Let's say they go uh, in and they say, okay, there are no increased coronary events, but they have more plaque. This kind of confirms what they found in other studies where having plaques isn't necessarily mean you have poor heart health because they find them in healthy people as well. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean there's, it's more complicated, I think, than what they may be showing. Yeah. I've always wanted a bit more clarity on what actually like, um, uh, creates these these deposits and this plaque and like is it because it, is it more of mineral based like what what in your diet specifically contributes to it the most uh, because like and to, is it unique to the individual yeah it's like it, yeah exactly if there's like genetic predispositions towards like you know more production of it because um, I've I've had theories too because my my grandpa was diagnosed like with having like he had a heart attack and he had um, I mean, they noticed plaque there as well. And he didn't have like the greatest diet, but it wasn't that terrible. And there was a lot of saturated fats in his diet. So they tried to immediately attribute it to that. Um, But he was also worked for this plant that was responsible for like um, insecticides and did a lot of chemicals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, And so, you know, based off of what uh, my experience with, with, 
a lot of these factors all kind of contributing towards, you know, <clears throat> some, some kind of epigenetic trigger that, you know, responds. I don't know. Like what, what is it? Like, is it their environmental toxins or their, so I mean, I'll, you know, this is obviously out of my lane. Okay. But just from what I've read that, um, the, one of the theories, and I think, I, I think I like this one the most just off of what I've, um, read and researched myself is that when you have some damage or inflammation, which can be caused by a lot of different things, can be caused by illness, can be caused by lots of stress, lack of sleep, poor diet, et cetera, that the way that the body tries to strengthen these arteries, the walls of these arteries, which start to become inflamed and can potentially, you know, become damaged as a result, uh, is, yep. it, is, it, is, it, is it patches the, the walls of the arteries with these, makes sense. With, with, with these plaques, which are made up of cholesterols, which is why they say, oh, reduce cholesterol, that'll help with this particular thing, which ne hasn't necessarily been proven. There may be some benefit in people who've already had a heart attack, but people who haven't, mm -hmm. this really hasn't been shown to be the case. Again, I I'm speaking out of my, my wheelhouse, so I may be incorrect, mm -hmm. but I, I think I, I like that. And then if the plaques get built big enough, then those can rupture and cause mm -hmm. a stroke or block uh, blood flow. So, and this can happen from... You can lead an extremely stressful life, have a great diet and exercise, but you can cause this inflammation to happen just from that. So I think it's much more. In fact, uh, Adam, you sent a study from Harvard that talked a little bit. It was an 85 year. It was an 85 year long. Yeah, study 85 year long study from Harvard. That um, one of the most important factors for longevity and just overall health is not exercise, not diet, having good relationships. Yeah, wow. And like the other study, there was another study that showed that having poor relationships was like smoking what was like ten or fifteen cigarettes I've, a day. I remember <clears throat> that one. Yeah, it's like having good relationships is probably the most important thing you can do as a human. Probably, and it's it's not. I also, you know, it's you know so overlooked. It, yes, it, it's uh, you know you have to unpack some of that too, though, right? Because I would make the case that. Somebody who has really good relationships with other people probably has a better relationship with loving themselves. And part of that would be taking care of themselves, Correct. right? Not I, abusing food and not using it like a drug like many people do. 100%. Taking care of yourself by walking and exercising. So even though exercising by itself or that it, and eating correctly doesn't rate as high, it's I would make the case that people who have really good relationships with others love themselves. And part of that process is not it, abusing. It, it, there's even like more to that, Adam, because I agree with you. I don't think there's, I think there's partly there's a magic to having good relationships because we're such social creatures, but the downstream effects uh, on our behaviors yes. are so profound. Yes. For example, when I went to Yellowstone, um, what state was that, that you go into uh, usually to, is it Montana? Montana, yeah. Montana. Did you know Montana has one of the highest suicide rates? Yeah. Do you know why they say? Because it's one of the most isolated, mm. where people live by themselves, far away from other people. Mm -hmm. And that's a risk factor for suicide, is not having people around you. Why? Because when you're sad, depressed, they can't step in and help you. Nobody's going to, you know. Can't uh, talk your way through it. Yeah. Yes. So having good relationships, you're probably going to have people you care about. You're going to want to care about yourself more. People yeah. are going to step in and be like, hey, man, you know, like you're drinking too much. Or, yeah. hey, you should probably do this. Or, hey, what's going on? Or, it gets you up out of bed. It makes you do things. So I think it's like good relationships contributes to everything else, mm -hmm. including exercise, diet, sleep, um, and other behaviors. Yeah. So hundred percent. Yeah. Like external feedback. Like you said, like having somebody there to just <clears throat> keep you accountable on some level, you know, cause we, <laughs> when it's all on your own shoulders at that point, it's like, Dude. Yeah. I mean, to that point, I mean, how important it is after what we just went through the last, you know, two, three years of <laughs> isolation and disconnecting and, transforming into this, you know, work away from home and zooming everybody, like how important it's going to be to get back into socializing and being in person. You and know? you know, what's hard about yeah. that is when you feel <clears throat> sad and lonely, you the want, last thing you want to do, you want to see yeah. people less. Yeah. It's a, it's a positive feedback loop or should I say negative feedback loop where you want to do it less. Arthur Brooks says, force yourself to talk to people when you feel that way. It's exactly what you need to do. What does that say there? Oh, Wyoming. Yeah, so 96% of Yellowstone is in Wyoming, only 3% in Montana. What's up, Bozeman? Where's Bozeman? Montana. Okay, that's where I was, where they okay. said that. Yeah. Oh, you were in Bozeman? Yeah, I went to I've Bozeman. Looked, I've looked at property out there before. It looks like a beautiful town. Gorgeous. Yeah. You know what was crazy over there? What? We're in Bozeman. First of all, Yellowstone's spectacular. People are, are so friendly. It was great, right? 
we're in Bozeman and there's a, there was a, I think I told you guys, there was like a shop and it's like a gun range, <laughs> guns. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, I looked at my wife. I'm like, dude, we're, we're not in California anymore. I bet you it's going to be rad in there. Let's go in. <laughs> we walk in. I swear to God, it's true. And you're like a rocket launcher. Bro, you try this rocket launcher? <laughs> bro, we walk in on the wall. Dude, Gatling guns? Yes. <laughs> on the wall, there's like 50 like different gun stuff you see in video games. I'm yeah. like, what is that? And I'm like, can I shoot that? And the guy's like, oh yeah, just uh, pick up gun. 20 bucks, buy the ammo, go around the corner. And like, that's it? Yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. That's I'm like, hilarious. I'll take that. What is that? It's like, it's an Israeli whatever. And do this. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's totally different. I know that uh, D Doug's never a big fan of when we we get into politics at all, but I can't help. I'm, I'm curious and I want to hear your opinion and I want to hear it on air because uh, you, you tend to call some of this stuff earlier. And you also have the ability, I think, to read between the lines. I think a lot of people get played by the the news and and you know get the knee jerk reaction mm. what is your opinion what is the move what is going on with uh this whole take down trump, trump with arresting him yeah. the i think the initial thing is that people think like the the right is up in arms right now like oh i can't believe this and they're like this is going to rally all of us together and this is what's going to help trump win the election I think I heard you say that this is what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So explain your theory on what the move and play is here and what's really going on the left in play, your opinion. The left plays politics uh, much more effectively than the right. They're actually they're very smart and cunning. They did this in the midterm elections. So what they did in the midterm elections is they, and there's evidence of this, there's clear evidence, where they tried to prop up the pro-Trump supporters on the right because they knew they could beat them so if Trump, to give you an example, if the left keeps putting, and Trump's got a huge ego, this is his biggest downfall, right? He's just this massive ego. And if you keep poking at him, fucking with him, he's going to try and run. And if he runs, he has a good chance of winning the primaries. He has a very strong following among the Republican base. He will never win a general election again. The odds of him winning general election are very small, but he'll win the primary. So the left, I my opinion is they want him to be in the news. They want to poke at him. They want him to win the primaries because they know they could beat him in the general because they are weak right now. I think the left, mm -hmm. the, Biden is- Because then they can still run on like anybody but Trump. Like, that's, that's right. still like something that like will deter people from- Well, and I think- He'll win 40%. I, I think, I think seeing it. Joe Biden as, as a president is a perfect example. That no. I, oh, I, yeah. I know very little people that even voted for him like him. It was like, he's not Trump. That's right. So the fact that- well put an inflatable doll right there. He's right. obviously senile. It's so obviously clear. Will he, will he run uh, maybe? <clears throat> Maybe, maybe they'll have them primary or they'll have somebody else take over, but they don't have a strong roster, but they know if they get Trump to win the primary, they got a good chance of winning because in the general, he's like toxic. He's just, you guys, I mean, Trump's got a big mouth, says a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. Um, and he rallies his people, but what he's, what he does even better on accident is he rallies people against them. Yeah. Um, and uh, so because so you think that, yeah, they're trying to embolden yep. that base. And then, you know, so that, cause DeSantis was, was a real threat in terms of like, you, you know, getting rational people in the middle and whatnot to kind of come in and vote. And so this is a way to kind of the, get rid of that. Their best chance for the left is that Trump uh, is, the, is the guy that wins the primary. That's their best chance. Mm. If he gets, if he wins a primary, that makes sense. Really good chance of winning. If it's somebody else, there's that guy, Vivek. I don't remember his last name. He's- yeah. uh, Oh, right. Him too, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty exceptional. There's DeSantis. The left doesn't have much. They're just talk of him like uh, Gavin Newsom. Um, although Newsom, against Trump, he would win because he seems like he's like calm, rational, whatever. Well, I think your point is true. I think anybody against Trump yeah. wins. Yeah. I really exactly. do. Yep. I think I, maybe just not Hillary. That's it. I mean, every, yeah. anybody, anybody else. I think anybody- She's the only person people hate more than <laughs> yeah, Trump. Yeah, like literally. I think anybody else- Beats Trump, yeah. and it's yeah. a it's a smart strategy. Again, the, the they did it in the in the in the midterms where they looked at their opponents. It's like imagine if you were a fighter, and there were like three guys that you could potentially fight. They all had to get votes to who who decide. And you know, like oh, there's two guys I can't beat. There's one guy I for sure can beat. Mm -hmm. And you come out with a strategy to make sure that that guy gets the most votes so that you can get in the ring and kick his ass for sure. Yeah. That's what they're playing, and it could backfire, of course. If somehow they- Oh, it could, but not likely. No, it, not it, likely. it worked for them in the midterms. It was supposed to be this huge red wave that didn't happen. 
And that's one of the reasons. I don't know too many people that after all of this, even the people that have admitted they hated Biden and, oh, Biden was was bad. I still don't hear that same person go, I wish I would have voted for Trump. No. They just say like, you know, Biden sucks. You know, Biden was terrible. They'll, They'll admit that their vote for Biden you know, that sucks that that's what they got. But they, ne- I never hear them go, man, if I could do it all over again, I would have voted for Trump. Yeah, I don't know anybody that says that. Because what the right could do to win if they had the right candidate is all they have to do is point to the <clears throat> pandemic and it, they could easily, easily mm-hmm. put the response to the pandemic squarely on the left. Even though they both were kind of responsible, it was the left that really pushed all those crazy policies. Yeah. So I would use that. I would run that. I would run ads. I would show all that. Economy, you could blame on them. Well, Not we'll, that the left there. will pin it on Trump, though, with like uh, ushering forward the vaccine That's so right. quick. And so that they'll have that. That's right. But yeah. Um, the, uh, the economy, not that it's the left's fault. Both parties are 100% to blame for that. But whoever's holding the bag is usually the one that gets That's right. it's blamed like hot, for hot it. Potato. Yeah. You can, you can blame <laughs> yeah. Ukraine. You, you know, Ukraine is very unpopular. You can pin oh that on the left. Yeah. But what they're going to do is if they get, if Trump gets up there, all they got to do is poke at his ego. And it's like, keep poking him. He's going to say something stupid. You know what I mean? And he will. He'll yeah. say something dumb and get yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. I think they're going to get him in handcuffs. It's going to be a bunch of, you know, videos, you know, videos on this stuff. Like it's going to rally his 40% of, you know, pissed off people. Yeah. yeah. And then forget it, man. <laughs> we'll see. God. We'll end up seeing what happens. Well, Politics Lord. is nasty, dude. It's just dirty. They All the way across. A lot of money goes into knowing how to manipulate people. They're brilliant. Rational people don't want anything to do with it. Super, super brilliant at that. Anyway. And it's been happening forever, too. Yeah. It's just, I think it's just, that's what I, I think it's no more corrupt today than it was even 40 50 years ago i think we're just more aware of it now yeah, we know i think i think it tricks. was I, yeah i don't think we were quite aware of it back in the 50s and 60s and stuff like that i think that it was just as corrupt back you ever then. look at the, you ever hear about the files the fbi had on celebrities martin luther king so you like, okay so you're bringing up exactly what I, i'm watching um do either do any of you guys oh, watch yeah. the uh the it's a MGM, which is a Epic's uh, a streaming service, it's got the. It's, I literally bought pay for it for one show. That's really good, and it's. Uh, I forget the name of the main actor. Doug can help me with it. Is, but it's about Bumpy Johnson, <coughs> and so and his relationship with Malcolm X, and like mm. how the CIA, CIA and FBI were. Is that like, the one that Forrest Whitaker? Yes, Forrest okay. Whitaker. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That. Really good. Really, really good, and it's, it's you know, it's not a, it's not true, but it's based on a lot of true events and things that happen, and so they use kind of old clips every once in a did while you, inside you, it. People, a lot of people don't know this. Martin Luther King's family won a civil lawsuit. Yeah. They proved in court yeah. that the government killed yeah. Martin Luther King. Yeah, nobody yeah. knows this. Yeah. Look it up. They won a civil lawsuit against yeah, the a lot, government. Where, just, where uh, conveniently throw that information did you out know, and trust the government implicitly? Did you know that they tried to blackmail him? This is also true. He had an affair. Martin Luther King had an affair on his yeah, wife. Yeah. The FBI had evidence of this, sent it to him, and said, if you don't blackmail. stop, you yeah. don't stop doing what you're doing, we're going to reveal this to everybody. Yeah. And he came out and told his wife, and then they didn't have that. They didn't have that anymore. Yeah. And so they, they. This is. Yeah, it's been like this for a long time. Well, so the and this show, the show is where it's at in the season is is where Ma- uh, Malcolm X is traveling around the world and like getting pop more popular and more popular and more popular, and the CIA and FBI are like extremely concerned. And where and it shows kind of and of course this is not a real movie, but you can't help but think like I bet that shit went down just like that shit where the. The government was using He's a like threat. yeah, we're yeah. using like drug dealers and 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 underground people and helping them out sell drugs so they would do things illegally for them and knock people off and potentially try and kill Malcolm X and just a lot of it's, shit like it's that. You go like, be interesting to see what comes out later on after the last few years of shenanigans. You know, like what we find out. Nothing. Lo- we won't find out. Anything. I mean, ten years from now. No, it's fifty, isn't it? Fifty. They can They're, lock shit up they'll, for. They'll it. keep. They'll keep. You know what they do, bro? For, it's forty or fifty years, Listen, right? Let Something me ask. Like you, none of these tactics went away. Just so you know. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys really want all that crazy no. shit to come out? Do you really want? I don't think it matters. I just like what you just said right now. But it the, the fact about Martin Luther King. It's not like you can't Google that yeah. and find that out right now. They just bury it. It probably it, came out. What the happens? Time there, there has to out. be there. There has to be a time frame where I mean, and we see you see people use yeah because JFK shit came out on that. Yeah, You're people, right. I'm, aliens came. We didn't care. Yeah. You know, <laughs> fucking UFOs came. We didn't care. Like after a certain amount of time, something passes. People just they move on from it. Yeah, there it is, right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it told you U.S. government found guilty of conspiracy to assassinate. 
Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh. <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. So wild, yeah. dude. I have something extra on this story. What is it? So after they got the witness testimonies, the King family who filed the civil suit was awarded $100, which they donated to charity. $100? $100? Why did they get so little? I don't know. I'm trying to find Asshole. exactly why, but well, probably it's because we were finding it's the same thing. Maybe there was not a lot of money involved in it, right? Or maybe there was a deal. That well, they said. yeah, like if we'll, we, we'll give you a hundred dollars if you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> no, no, we'll give you like millions of dollars if you keep your mouth shut, or you could tell everybody. And we'll give oh, you oh, got but it. Why would that even? That's the thing. So here's the deal: if something is shown to be too much of a threat to national security, they'll keep it silent. They've done this. So they bring things to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court says. Sorry, we can't reveal this. This will destroy, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, it happened recently. It right? just, it, yeah. yeah, it happened recently. Yeah. No, that's, so I, I don't, really, I mean, I don't know if we'd want something. I mean, could you imagine if stuff came out and they're like, oh, by the if way. If stuff came out while we're currently in the middle of it, it would cause chaos. But once a certain amount of time passes, I feel like we're we're funny like that. You're we're, probably we're, right. Gulf of Tonkin, which is what got us into Vietnam. Yeah. That came out much later. It never happened, guys. Sorry. Yeah. We made that up. Yeah, <laughs> and then and it's it's almost like we don't care after a while. It's like where we forget, we so easily forget that, which is also why I think it's crazy when other stuff resurfaces and we are so quick to like trust the government. I know. It's like the, their track record's not so good, you know? Not yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, but no. we we easily you know forget. We're pharmaceutical companies like <laughs> oops, all these lawsuits and all these like yeah, crazy instances. You you know, they have, they have money that's unaccounted for. That's actually part of the, the way they run. I think the CIA yeah. has a bunch of it's money. It's like billions. Yeah, that they- It's they, like billions that like when they do- It doesn't their, count. Yeah, is it, isn't the FBI the same thing too? I think there's like a-, like a, like a Well, they have, they have trillions of dollars in, yeah, in the Pentagon that's unaccounted for. Yeah. What does that do? <laughs> Conveniently. Oh, yeah. This is for JFK. It was determined that local, state, and federal U.S. government agencies and the mafia were all involved. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what, so the and the mafia. You guys would really like the. Uh, it's it's called. Um, it's not called Bumpy Johnson. Maybe Doug can look up the name of the the actual uh, show. It's such a good show. It's really really good. But yeah, they talk. They show a lot of the relationship between like these big drug dealers and gangsters with and, and even the the mafia and stuff with the CIA and FBI because no this one. This is like when I had family members in Sicily who opened a business. I told you guys about this. They opened their business. It got too successful. The local whatever chieftains went over to them and said, "Hey, you guys need to shut down. You're you're you know, you're taking business away from these other people that you know are our are, are people." And they said, "We're Americans. We don't. We're going to do what we want." Anyway, they came back. Their shop was destroyed. They had to redo it and go make a deal. <laughs> and I remember talking to them. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to call them out. But I remember talking to them, and I was like, "Why don't you guys just move back? So like, you guys pay taxes here. You guys pay all. It's like that over there." It's like the same thing. I just do it to different people. Right. Well, I can't argue. <laughs> yeah. Different tax. There it is. Godfather of Harlem. Oh, is that it? Have you not watched it yet, Doug? I haven't. I oh. will, though. Oh, now yeah. It's it. it's one of my favorite shows on TV. It's on the third season now. Every season's been epic. Oh, I got to check and it out. And they do. They pull... They have like little historical pieces in there. Malcolm X has a major part in the in the whole the whole series, and then you see like every once in a while they do flashbacks of like black and white footage of what was going on, and then they'll tie it into the story and stuff. So obviously, I know the whole thing is not completely true, but the, you, it does give you that feel that they pull a lot mm. of a lot of truth well, into it. Speaking of forgetting mm -hmm. and trying to remember uh, stuff, uh, you know, there's compounds in Organifi's Pure that help a lot. With <laughs> what a great <laughs> transition right with there with memory. <laughs> Really helps with the lion's mane and memory yeah. show to help Thank goodness. build the synapses. And now, okay, so I haven't, so Comes since through in the last minute, you yeah. Know. yeah. No, so, I mean, seriously, though, what I haven't done, and I, I since you bring it up and we have a commercial today, maybe I'll mess with it today, is I haven't combined pure with the peptides that we're taking right now. Oh, bro, you got to throw everything together, Adam. What, I haven't have you done not learned anything from me uh, since the eight years we worked together. If something Captain works Stack. and something else works, you combine mix it. them all. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So, have you done the pure with the dehex? Uh, oh, dihexa yeah. or whatever oh. we're taking. We're, we're taking di what? dihexa and C Max. Yes, yeah. dihexa and C Max. We're taking. <laughs> I don't even know the names. Can't always. remember. I know. Yeah. I can't. I, I lean on this guy. Just I just tell me. I could give. I could poison Adam. He would never know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Here, take this, Adam. Oh. That's what keeps our relationship all good, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can only push it. So Adam's far. getting too smart. <laughs> yeah. Here, take this. <laughs> take <him down. laughs> So you don't, you don't yes. Oh, yeah, I mix it all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah, I, take them, I take it all the time. I've done it with caffeine, and I love it with caffeine. Oh, yeah. So I'm I not... also throw caffeine in there. 
<laughs> such a what bad example. You this? <laughs> You're such a bad example for our audience. Bro, I'm literally like, if I wasn't into fitness, I'd be terrible, bro. Fitness keeps me alive. I tell you what. Yeah. I'm like, was uh, the way I use supplements. Well, oh, I'm I, sure people actually appreciate the transparency too, though. I yeah. mean, I think that's, uh, I mean, you've always been that you're the most consistent too. I mean, you're the person who I'll come to if I want to know about something because like you remind me of, uh, we've talked on the show before about Ben Greenfield. There's certain yeah. people that I don't care how much you can regurgitate the science about the product and you've, you've, you've memorized all the studies and like to sell it. Because I used to do that shit. Yeah. We, I used that example on one of the last episodes. I can still sell you pyruvate, lipotropic transport, and fucking all that bullshit, right? <laughs> so that doesn't impress me. What impresses with me is somebody who is so regimented and dialed about their workout, sleep, nutrition, and so consistent that play with these products. Because then I can I can ask an honest opinion and be like, you know, well, you know, you created you, ro wiggle room there. To, yeah, to and you've you've already you've done the big rocks because I already know that a good night or a bad night of sleep will affect your cognitive, your cognitive abilities, your ability to work yeah, out way more, perform, than way more than any of these yeah. things. So if you're not managing that consistently, yeah. I don't give a shit about you telling me like, Oh, this pre-workout or Oh, this supplement. So great. It's like, come on, you could have just had a great night's sleep last yeah. night and then tell me that. But somebody who does like, I appreciate that. No, so. pure is uh, you guys, since they came out with it, I, we use that pretty regularly. It's a very mm -hmm. consistent, nice, healthy feeling. And the, the longer you use it, the better it gets. Yeah. The more you use the non-stimulatory. Yeah. 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 All right. So today's shout out a good friend of ours, Dr. Ruscio. We've had him on the show. We haven't had him on the show in a long time, but he's a functional medicine practitioner, author. Um, what was the book that he wrote? It was so good. Uh, oh, uh, Healthy Gut, Healthy You. One of the one of the best books on gut health, but he's a great guy. Got a great page. His page on Instagram is D-R Ruscio, R-U-S-C-I-O D-C. So um, his, his specialty is gut health, but he's a functional medicine practitioner. So he talks about all things health. Sleep, good sleep, contributes to mental health, fat loss, muscle building, improved hormone profiles. Check this out. There's one thing you can do to dramatically improve your sleep. That is control the temperature of your room and of your bed. Well, there's a company we work with called Sleep Me. They have a device, they have several devices that go on your bed and that you can control the temperature with an app on your phone. And it's regulated. In other words, you set the temperature and that's it all night long. Improve the quality of your sleep, enhance your body's ability to burn body fat, build muscle, and just make you feel overall better. It's a great product. It's a game-changing product. Go check them out. Go to sleep.me forward slash pump 30, and you can get 25% off any of their sleep systems if you go there. Again, sleep.me forward slash pump 30. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Nicholas from Colorado. Nicholas, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Oh, well, not much. Uh, again, thanks you guys for taking time to answer my questions here. And uh, it's been uh, great here. I stumbled on you guys about a couple months ago and just kind of been been watching you guys nonstop. Definitely enjoy the synergy you three bring together and uh, kind of pushing to find a nice balance for a long and healthy life. Oh, thank you. Right on. I don't like either one of these guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fake. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> uh, so kind of my, for my first question here. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to read off my question here uh, so you guys can just ask me any uh, background info as needed. But I'm currently uh, reverse dieting here and I'm, I'm about or actually currently am and moving into a DLO week after finishing MAPS Anabolic for the first time. And I'm kind of wondering, is this just a time to like to pause the diet at the kind of currently current calories that, I, and, and, yeah, that I'm in, even though I'm like not really gaining weight or very slight weight gain? or continue to push the calories, even though I'm not sending as strong as a muscle building signal. Okay. So you're, you're so this is during the deload week or in general? Yeah. It, just a deload week or even like a hectic week here when I was, I kind of planned the deload week when I had to travel for work for right. a week. So I was it, trying to just. And, it's, and it sounds like you're currently in a bulk. Is that right? Am I hearing that correctly? You're reverse dieting. It looked like. Okay. Correct. Yes. So, yeah. That's going to be my second part of my question. So, so Nick, so here's what, here's the, the, the purpose and concept um, and value of a deload week. And we now have studies that actually show this, that during a deload week, people actually see greater adaptations and strength and muscle growth. They come back and they perform at higher levels had they not taken the deload week. Now, what could mitigate that or potentially negate some of that is if you were to go into a deload week and then cut your calories 
to try to compensate for the reduced energy um, burn. You don't want to do that because uh, think about it this way. That enhanced recovery and adaptation requires nutrients, requires calories. So going on a cut when it's only a week, right? You're only doing a week deload. Now, if you're like, hey, I'm not going to work out for eight weeks, you know, two months or something, then I would say, yeah, you know, then we probably want to start to scale the calories down because you'll start to gain some body fat. But what you don't want to do is if it's a week, you don't want to try to compensate by cutting calories because then you kind of kill the purpose of the deload week. In fact, and you don't have to do this, uh, but I've seen great results doing this and I've seen this with clients as well, where they go into a, a week of a deload and they actually increase their calories to augment the recovery and adaptation process. So I think you should keep everything the same. Go in your deload week, keep everything the same, come back to your workout and you'll see greater results doing it that way than had you tried to cut your calories during that period of time. I think knowing that he's in a reverse diet uh, makes a big difference on how I answer that too. So the fact that we're in the process of building your metabolism right now, that takes a higher priority for me. And so I would want to keep your calories the same or potentially bump like Sal saying during that deload. Yeah, he's at 3,400 calories, which let's, is great. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. pretend you, you've you been doing this for years. You're at a very healthy place. You love where your calorie intake is and you're just taking a week off of deload. I, so I, I do this and I, I tend to scale back on the calories, but I'm not trying to make moves metabolically. I don't, I'm not really worried about gaining a bunch of muscle or strength. I'm just like, this is how I ebb and flow in my life. Uh, that's what I would do at that state, uh, uh, in my journey. But if you're, if I'm in the middle of like trying to build my metabolism, which is actually where I'm currently at right now. And if let's say I were to do a deload week next week, I wouldn't cut calories. I'm trying to, I'm trying to increase my calories right now. So it makes sense to, to maintain that. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, there's, if you cut your nutrients, your macronutrients, you cut your calories, you reduce the available, uh, nutrients and essentially you, 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 you're reducing the building blocks that your body could potentially use for that recovery, for that adaptation. Now, to be clear, because I'm sure there's someone listening that's like, um, you know, gonna, gonna a science nerd, like, well, it doesn't require that many calories and that kind of, you know, whatever. It's it's not so simple. It's not so black and white as you know. It takes this many calories to burn this many pounds of muscle, etc. It's more like this: when you cut your calories, you are sending a signal to the body that says. Uh, we need to become more efficient with calories. We probably shouldn't build as much muscle. We probably shouldn't, we're not going to perform as hard. So during that period of time, especially if you're, it's like Adam said, you're reverse dieting, you're trying to build, and it's only a week, it's only seven days. Um, I would keep you exactly the same. That'll maximize the whole the whole process. All right. Okay, yeah, I was kind of figuring that was the case, but I just wanted to kind of see where you guys' thoughts were. Yeah, no problem. Are you, and this is anabolic advanced you're on? No, just regular anabolic right now. Okay, and you're just throwing in. Uh, where are you throwing these deload weeks in on average? Uh, so this was just at the end of the cycle. Like I said, it also kind of worked in when I had to travel. Um, Got it. Uh, for weeks, I was like, well, this is kind of perfect time. Just kind of back off and then try to do the best I can 100%. in the hotel room. 100%. Mm -hmm. Which, by uh, the way, I love. That's how I like to program. In between so programs. Yeah, mm -hmm. because, yeah. It, well, it like, well, no, like in life happens, oh, right? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, like yeah. you, I mean, I think people sometimes are always asking us like this, like the science, like when is the best time to do a deload week or when should I scale back on this or when should I do more body weight and, and pull back my intensity? And I'm like, well, you know, most people, life kind of naturally throws it at you. You got a vacation come up, you got to travel for work. Like, hey, that's a good time for maybe to to reset, kind of pull it back a little bit because you've been going hard and consistent. To me, that's a the way to do it. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Um, All right. I guess the, if you have time for the second question here. Let's sure. Hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah. So it's kind of more of what my my end goal here. The So uh, basically, I was kind of wondering how long to stay in this reverse diet. If my goal is to end up eating around 3,000 calories a day after I cut from around 25% body fat, which I'm currently in to my goal around 15 to 18% fat, okay. body fat. I don't know if this is even realistic or not. So I was just kind of give you guys a thought of which way I should go or continue. How, how long have you been reverse dieting? Uh, it's basically this, the, the, so what, about 12 weeks here uh, okay. when I started anabolic. What were your calories out when you started? Uh, about 2,900 calories. So you've gone up roughly 500 calories. Um, yeah. in that period of time, have you gained any body fat? Um, have you gotten stronger? Like, what have you noticed? Uh, so basically the scale stayed about the same. There's about a, there's a caveat here. So I did start to take creatine for the first time since I started anabolic. So I've gained about 
uh, three pounds from the end, uh, from the beginning to the end. Um, so, but the body fat on the scale said stayed about the same. So most wow. likely I've gained about the same kind of bro. Keep going. A little bit of body fat, a little yeah. bit about a muscle. Yeah, keep, I think, I keep think going. You could get to 4,000 calories. Yeah, Honestly, the way I would go to determine when I come back the other way is when you're tired of eating. So that, that was kind of, that was the way I'd coach my clients is I'd say, Hey, uh, and they'd say like, well, how long are we going to keep doing this? And I'm like, listen, if your body fat ain't going up, you're getting stronger. You're eating more foods. You tell me when you're tired of eating. And when you get to a point where you're like, man, Adam, it's just tough to get 4,000 calories in every single day. Perfect. This is a great time for us to cut back a little bit and go back to what feels comfortable. And then I feel like you'll kind of land in this like natural, you know, homeostasis where you're eating a, a comfortable amount of calories and you're leaning out. And that's like the most beautiful place to be. Gotcha. That, yeah. I guess that was going to be my question. I just kind of keep going and, until I stop seeing things and just kind of lean out. Yep. Mm -hmm. really, I think there's really no timeline. No, but. no, you're right. There's and I think you'll probably get like around 4,000 because if you're already right. at 3450 after 12 weeks, uh, you know, and haven't gained any body fat, I think you'll probably land somewhere around 4,000. And then from there, you'll probably want to cut. All right. Yeah. Cause I was kind of like, said, cause like, I, I know I don't want to keep counting calories. I've been yo-yo dieting for years and stuff. So like, I finally want to just be able to kind of go off at the end, you know, be mindful and everything, but excellent. You know, so, you know, I just know like around 3000 calories is kind of where I naturally stopped after, you know, I was tracking it a little bit before starting anabolic. So excellent. It's like, that's, that's where I want to end up. So yeah, no great <laughs> job, man. Yeah. You're doing good. All right. That's All right, great. Nick. Wonderful. Thanks, right, Nick. Man. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, guys. You know, it, I, when I see posts on social media, uh, I just saw one recently about, like, you can't speed up your metabolism, blah, blah, blah. I hate that. I hate it when fitness uh, influencers confuse the shit out of people. And I hate it when they use, like, data is important, okay? But data is not perfect because we don't have perfect studies. We don't have things. We often don't study things the right way. And it takes sometimes a long time to figure things out that people have known for a while already. And you talk to coaches, trainers, people who've worked in gyms forever. Can you speed up your metabolism? Yes, 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 yes. I've seen it many times. This guy literally bumped his calories, 500 calories, didn't gain any body fat. What does that tell you? His metabolism sped up. He, he, his body weight stays the same. He's eating more calories. He is burning more calories as a result of what he's doing as part of the signaling that he's telling his body. So, and it's not as easy as you're moving more, moving less type of deal. It doesn't work that way. It's way more complex than that. So, and again, this is one more example. And I've, I've done this to people so many times. It's literally, it's dependable like clockwork. I know. I'm always, uh, I'm always mystified at like what their desired outcome is by putting out a message like that, you know, cause it's to be more right. To sound yeah, smart. exactly. Just yeah. to sound smart. Yeah. And what are you, who are you really helping at the end of the day? And so even if it isn't like the right terminology or you have like a different way of presenting it, like it's still, the message is, is like, let's focus on, do you want to hear something? You want to hear something funny yeah. up until this is true. The eighties or nineties, Studies done on anabolic steroids literally said they do not build muscle. They said the weight gain is water. Uh, and and they would actually make this argument. Wow. Meanwhile, athletes all over the world were taking them and breaking world <laughs> records. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you keep saying that, buddy. Because yeah. we're seeing great, you know, we're, we're, we know that this cool works. Cool story, so. nerd. Yeah, now data shows, of course. Now they have studies that show that does build muscle. But that's my point. I mean, you're going to have studies that are going to counter sometimes what lots and lots and lots of anecdote and common knowledge says. And it basically what, what that says is, we need more studies. We need better studies because uh, we know this to be true. We see what's happening time and time again. Like I said, like clockwork, mm -hmm. I can take somebody and I can make this happen. Now, to the degree uh, to how much I can make happen, that's a lot of that is up to the, the genetics of the individual yep. and, yeah, and all that. But I can make it happen every single time. It's the unfortunate part of social media. I mean, I think social media has brought a, an amazing uh place for people to find knowledge and information and, and very easily access uh, answers to, to great deep questions. The problem with it is that it gives everybody a platform and then it turns into this competitive, like who can get more clicks and views. Yeah, it's like a dick and, measuring contest. Yeah. And then it, it becomes who's more right and, and, or who can say the most controversial thing and then back it up with the most research versus really thinking of the desired outcome to the point you were making, Justin. And so yeah, you know, that's just obviously, uh, I, 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 it bothers me, but then I also recognize that this is what 
makes what we do great is that mm -hmm. we we have the ability to have this long form conversation and have dialogue around it. And I think that if there wasn't all those idiots out there that were saying stupid shit like this, we probably wouldn't have a podcast. Our next caller is Martin from California. Martin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, Good man. What's happening? Good. First things first, I just want to say uh, I appreciate being on the show today. It's an honor and a privilege to speak to uh, three individuals who have so many years of experience in the fitness industry. I'm truly grateful for your entertaining podcast. Every podcast I listen to has made me learn something new every day and also made me laugh at the same time, which I feel like is getting more rare in podcasts in the fitness industry industry today. So thank you so much for that. Thanks, Mark. Cool, thank thanks. You. Now for my question, uh, my goal is to put on more muscle mass to my physique. I'm currently 18 years old and I've played competitive sports all my life. I recently just stopped playing basketball at a very high level, I would say. Um, during high school, I was following Paul Fabritz's program for like speed and vertical. So I wasn't doing any upper body training. If anything, it was very minimal. Um, now that I've stopped playing basketball, basically at a high level and reduced my cardio amount a lot. I still love to play basketball and other sports as well. Very frequently. I would say all my life, I love to play sports and that was my first love. Um, so I started to train like a bodybuilder for a couple months now for my upper body, but I'm still a bit confused from my lower body days. I still want to be like explosive and agile, but at the same time, I still want to put on size. So I understand my goal is to increase size and like my whole physique, but I'm willing to take a longer approach because sports, like I said, is my favorite form of exercise. So would I have to transition, like, would there be a disproportion in my physique if I still did like explosive stuff for my legs, like sprints, plyometrics and lightweight training versus doing the whole bodybuilder approach? Um, no, that's, that's one way you could do it. But let me ask you this. How often are you still playing, um, sports? Um, so right now I'm currently in tennis season. I'm playing every day. Like sometimes our matches can be like four or five hours of intense oh, wow. cardio. Okay. So a good amount, like pretty much every day. Okay. Well, okay. look, here's what you do. Train like a bodybuilder once a week and then play your sports the rest of the week and you'll get all, all of what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Cause okay. yeah, with that much activity, if you start, if you do more than one day a week of, of, of strength training, you're going to compromise. It'll be too much. Yeah. And because you're 18, you've trained at a high level for a long time. You can tolerate a lot. But uh, like I've said many times on the podcast, what's optimal and what you can tolerate are two different things. So you can okay. get away with training in the gym a lot, but you're not going to build as much muscle as if you do it optimally. So I would go one day a week, full body workout, build strength, focus on the core lifts, you know, your bench presses, your rows, your overhead presses, uh -huh. your barbell squats, deadlifts, that kind of stuff. And then the rest of the week, play your sports. Uh -huh. And then as you build mass, uh, and then make sure, here's the part, make sure you eat enough calories, Martin. This is the biggest challenge. Yep. Stay fed. Yeah. With, with, okay. uh, when I, when I work with people, your age, your activity level, it's like mm -hmm. getting them to eat enough is a challenge because they skip meals. Mm -hmm. And then when they do eat, they think, oh, I'm going to eat this huge, crazy fast food meal to make up for it. And then they feel bloated and they can't eat anymore. So try to eat frequently. I would say every two or three hours, eat a nice protein, carbohydrate, healthy fat meal. Make sure your calories are up there. One day a week, full body workout uh, and, and focus on the core body, the, the core strength lifts and then go play, you know, five, six, seven days a week. And whatever mass you put on, you'll learn how to coordinate with your athleticism because of the amount of, uh, of sports that you're playing. Less is more and, okay. and stay fed for sure. I mean, I, I don't know how long you've been listening to the podcast or not, but I've shared this. Uh, I mean, I went, I remember going through this uh, myself and I was playing basketball like five days a week. Plus I was you know, training five to seven days a week and just, I couldn't gain. You know, I was strong, uh, you know, I looked all right, but I wanted to, I wanted to look more like a bodybuilder, but they, I didn't want to give up my basketball <clears throat> and I was training too hard in the gym and I wasn't being, and I wasn't fed enough, mm -hmm. reducing the amount of lifting, increasing the calories. And all of a sudden, boom, I, I yeah. jumped like 15 And, and here's the key to that, Adam, you got away with it. It wasn't like, right. oh, it yeah. wasn't like you're, oh my God, I can't sleep and I feel terrible. You get away with yeah, it. You're real resilient at that age. Yes. I mean, and that's the thing too. And this is what I dealt with with a lot of athletes. Uh, uh, you know, when I was training them for football, even and just trying to gain overall size because they still wanted to be just as active and and keep up like that kind of intensity and also like train like a bodybuilder simultaneously. And when they're just like spinning their tires in the mud at that point, like we weren't making a whole lot of progress in terms of overall size and, and muscle uh, strength. And so, yeah, so I, I fully agree. It's 
you know, if, if that's what, what your parameters are right now and your focus and like uh, sports are still going to be a high priority, like this is how we're going to wedge it in there uh, in order to gain that kind of benefit at some point. I think it would be advantageous for you to take a season off and really focus on, you know, building, developing your, your overall body and physique if that's like more of a goal. So yeah. just consider that. I'll, I'll give you two pieces of advice, Martin, that I think will contribute more to muscle mass for you than anything else. And this is just because I know... I've worked with people your age and I've worked with people like yourself who like to be quite active at your age. And I know what the challenges that I always run into with, uh, you know, guys in their late teens, early twenties. So here's a two piece of advice. And I swear to God, if you do, you take what I say and you follow it religiously, you will see muscle pile on your body. Okay. Two things. One, eat enough calories, hit your protein targets and feed yourself consistently. Not like four days a week and then three days a week, you mess, you know, whatever. No, every single day, make sure you eat enough. Here's the second one. Get eight hours of sleep every night. Go to bed at the same time every night. Wake up at the same time every morning. Don't do the whole, I go to bed at 3 a.m. on Friday. I'm going to try and sleep in and give myself jet lag type of deal. I'm telling you right now, I know this, maybe this is going one year out the other, but I'm telling you right now, if you get eight hours of sleep every single night and feed yourself, you're going to grow like a weed. You're going to grow so fast that people are going to think you're taking anabolic steroids. If you don't do what I'm saying, I don't care what your workout looks like. I don't care anything else. You're not going to see any progress. So do those okay. two things and, 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 and lift once a week. Watch what happens. Okay. Thank you so much. I would add to that. Like you were saying about the sleep. Sometimes I, I do go to bed very early, like for the earliest my age. Sometimes I even go to bed like 10 PM. I'm out at bed. Um, sometimes though, I do come in late from school. And so, uh, a lot of people have been telling me your stomach can't digest when you go to sleep. But the thing is, I don't get enough calories during the day and dinner I eat the most. So that has been a struggle with me just trying to eat as much calories and eating it at nighttime. Yeah. So that's, that's not a huge issue unless you start to notice digestive issues. It becomes more okay. of a challenge when you get older, but I will say this, the problem is, is you're getting behind the eight ball. In other words, uh, the day gets away from you and they're like, oh my God, I need to hit two more, 2,000 more calories. Try and make up for it. Martin, yeah. who makes your food? Do you make your food? Yeah, I uh, meal prep everything. Okay, so I, I mean, the key here too, this was another big hack for me at this age, was, was making sure I get some good calories in before noon. That's it. Because I, oh, yeah. I was notorious for the, the mm -hmm. energy drink and the bagel. You know, and then I, then I had like the big Start sandwich lunch protein. and then at dinner, I'm like trying to catch up 2000 calories plus, And that's just a lot of food to try to get in at the end of the night. And so one of the keys in uh, of being successful at hitting your protein intake and calorie intake is getting, is getting ahead of it. Have early. a big ass breakfast. And so one of the ways I love to do that is, and since you meal prep, when you make your dinners, man, your dinner now becomes your breakfast. You just throw two, two to four eggs on top of it. Like okay. I, I feel like any meat and rice or any meat and sweet potato with eggs on top of it just tastes bomb. That's literally like becomes my staple breakfast is whatever I had for dinner become. And I throw maybe a little bit of cheese and eggs on top of it. Now it's my, now it's my breakfast Yeah, and make that your breakfast. So you're, you're kicking that day off with a thousand calorie meal with 60 grams of protein. Now you're staying ahead of the calories and the protein. It gets a lot easier in later in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Eat breakfast like a King. Uh, and what is it? Dinner, like a pauper, pauper not yeah. the other way around. Are you, um, can you have milk? Yeah, yeah, I drink milk a lot. No problem, right? Okay, whole milk. Have a glass of whole milk every time you every eat. Every meal. Yeah, so like okay. every, every if you eat every three hours, you add a, a glass of whole milk to that. You just increase your calories by like 600 calories. And bumped your protein. And 10, bumped your protein. 10 to 15 grams yeah. every meal. Yeah, easy. Okay, sounds good. And a lot of people have been telling me um, calories are calories. Just eat whatever you want. No. Like mm -hmm. eat no. a bunch of junk food. No. Yeah, sound like I, I strongly disagree because <laughs> I try to add ice cream to my shakes and it hurt my stomach. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just completely avoid that stuff. Whole natural foods. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whole Easily natural digestible foods. foods. Yep. Yeah. Especially okay. when you're eating a lot of calories. If you're eating a lot of calories, one of the, <laughs> the easiest ways to screw up the whole process is to eat stuff that messes up your stomach. Now yeah. you're now you're screwed. And you're yeah. young, and I get you're going to have some of those things every once in a while. But yeah. make make a goal like this. This is what I love. Don't to be tell afraid them. of them, but don't aim for them. So what I I used to tell my young guys is this: Listen, hit your targets first, and then if you still want to enjoy yourself a bowl of ice cream or you want to enjoy something, then then you can yeah. have that. But make it a goal to hit your targets through whole natural foods that you prep for yourself. Yeah. And then if you want something on top of that later on, or you have some move. magic spoon in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. Hey Martin, real quick too. milk. There's a, there's a type of milk called a two, <laughs> a two, a two. You can find it at the grocery store. It's only like, and maybe a dollar more for a gallon, but, uh, or a quart or whatever. 
it is um, a type of protein that is easier to digest than other types. So if you're going to be drinking that much milk, I would go with the easier to digest version. It's called A2, whole milk, a glass with every meal. And then for his for his one day of lifting, you want him to do a foundational day from performance or anabolic? Oh, anabolic. He's yeah. playing so much sports. Yeah. Let's go. yeah do you have MAPS anabolic, Martin? I do not know. All right, we'll send that to you. Okay, thank you guys so much. You got it, man. Thanks All for right. calling in. Have a good one. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You got right. it. Am I the am I the only one in here that gets slightly jealous when you hear an eighteen year old kid who's like, I got all the time in the world. I do all this stuff. I just want to gain. Like, oh yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to be awesome. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, where do I go? Yeah, I like, oh, I miss those oh, days. Man. You know, yeah, where you could just you just, just eat everything. It's just and, about you. you yeah, know what I mean, exactly. <laughs> you just yeah, do what you want. I know. I, but yeah, I tell you what, for the average uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old, like if they just ate enough consistently and got regular sleep, they would all gain like 10 pounds of lean body mass. And those are the two things they always screw up on. Always. Yeah. 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 The sleep's a huge one. Well, there's still a stupid popular message. I mean, we were actually just talking with someone off air the other day about like this. Do we really think that there's such thing as overtraining? And it's like, yes, dude. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's so hard. And these young kids, they hear this like, oh, you're just under eating. So they think just eat, 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 eat. And then, garbage. Yeah. And then train hard, 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 hard. And forget about, forget about like trying to get yeah. good sleep. Forget about that you're playing basketball five days a week yeah. and you're lifting five Meanwhile, days a week. your explosive diarrhea is shooting out like half of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> like, dude, yeah. Okay. What are we doing here? I know. Our next caller is Jeff from Tennessee. Jeff, what's happening, man? How can we help you? I'm... I'm doing well. Um, I just had an issue with a lot of fatigue lately, and I can't figure out what I'm not doing right. Okay. Do you have kids? <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, they're grown say, out question. of the house. I was going to say, if you have kids, then forget it. No. <laughs> you married. No. All joking <laughs> aside. In your I've been there and done that. They're in college. All right. Good for you, man. So you're, you're, you look young, man, by the way. So, all right. So you're, in your question, oh, you wrote down that you eat well, take supplements, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you get good sleep as well. Yeah, I push between six and a half to eight. You know, giving on the day. Okay. Um, I would. What does your caffeine look like? Yeah, that's the other question. But 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 back to sleep. Okay. I would I would aim for a consistent eight every single night. That's almost okay. always the reason why someone feels fatigue is that they're not just not getting enough sleep. They're not getting enough quality sleep. So your mm -hmm. eight hours might only actually be six and a half of quality sleep. So I would make eight hours a goal across the board. And, and, then, al and along those lines, is the range, the six to eight, is that because you get up at different times or is that because you go to bed at different times? Nah, I try and keep it pretty consistent, 9.30, you know, central time. And, and But I usually, it depends on the day, you know, 4 a.m. wake up, 5 a.m. wake up. I don't know if I should just get up and get to start the day or... Oh, so you wake up without trying. Your body just wakes up. Yeah, it just kicks me right awake. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, then Justin asked a great question, which is your caffeine intake. Uh, do you take any stimulants like caffeine? Um, usually about two cups of regular coffee in the morning. Um, I was just using nontropics instead of the caffeine. Which ones? Uh I was taking a comp using a company called FNX. Oh, 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 you were thinking about using them. You're not using oh. nootropics now. No, no, I am using them about okay. twice a day. Okay, nootropics on the market tend to be stimulant based as well. So, okay, okay. Here, here's the deal. Um, and you can, I mean, there's more stuff we can look at, but I'm going to start with the 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 common, I guess, big rocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and and now it's going to suck for about a week or two, but then we'll see if it starts to get better. I would reduce your caffeine intake by half and then uh, okay. and, and, and not take the nootropics. Then the following mm -hmm. week, cut caffeine out completely, no nootropics. You'll notice, you should notice that you'll be able to sleep like nine hours, no problem. And you're going to feel like okay. garbage for about a week and a half to two weeks because your, your body has to adjust. After that, mm -hmm. you should start to feel better. Now, if you don't and you're just like, man, I've been doing this for three weeks. I'm not on caffeine not taking any stimulants. I still feel like garbage. I still wake up early. I don't know what's going on. Then I would go and get a blood panel done just to look at hormone levels. You said you have kids in college, so I'm assuming you're over the age of 45. Yeah, I'm actually 50. I'll be 53 this month. Okay. I would go get a blood panel just to look at hormones like testosterone and see if you're, okay. out, of, if you're out of range. At your age, 
if you're out of range and you can't raise it naturally, uh, testosterone replacement therapy can work wonders. I don't, I don't want to go there first though, because if, if okay. yeah, because it could mask what the real issue might be, which might be the stimulants and the, and the poor sleep. I have more questions about what do you do for work? And then what are you training consistently right now? And what does that look like if you are or not? Um, for work, um, I'm at the desk all day, uh, doing, uh, I'm training for some claims, you know, working, uh, VA medical claims. I'm retired Navy. So okay. I moved into the VA system and, uh, I'm working on that. Uh, I do try and train about a half hour to an hour a day. Um, my building has a regular gym with the, uh, the machines and some free weights. So, uh, I had CrossFit for a, about four years straight and I haven't done that. Um, you know, so I was trying to get back into the Olympic weightlifting style and just going from there, you know, machines and doing some, uh, power cleans and, you know, overhead press and stuff like that. Now, if you're fatigued, I wouldn't do those. Yeah. I I'm going to send you maps 15, 15 if you don't have it. Yes. hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't. Fo follow maps 15. Uh, try what I said, see how that feels. Um, see if that gives you, if you start, you'll take about three, four weeks, uh, to, to see if you start okay. to feel better. If you don't, like I said, yeah. I'll get hormone panels done to see if it, if it has anything to do with your testosterone. But my guess is it has mm. more to do with just poor quality sleep. Yeah. Um, and that, okay. and do you get sunlight in the morning? Yeah, vitamin D. Some, I mean, it's been really crappy weather here <laughs> recently. But so, uh, I usually try to, yeah. Yeah, every morning get sunlight. That really does, um, uh, work wonders for the circadian rhythm. Even if it's cloudy, you're going to get some mm -hmm. sun rays through the clouds. And then if, if you don't have, if your desk is next to a window, open that, those blinds. And even if it's cloudy outside, sit next to that window, that'll, that should make a difference as well. Have you, Jeff, have you ever used like a pedometer to check what uh, your steps are on a daily basis? I do. I run my Garmin. Okay. Um, I'm hitting about four, well, between two and four miles a day. Okay. How many steps is that? Adam? My, He's probably eight for me. 000. Okay, me it's like forty five hundred for two miles. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I think Maps fifteen would be the workout. I would, I would cut the caffeine, focus on the sleep. That usually, I'd say, probably seventy percent of the time to eighty percent of the time fixes the problem. Yeah, it's just a two. Okay. It's like a two week period of where it's going to be kind of crappy. Focus a little more on being hydrated too. As you're cutting the caffeine levels down, like I know mm -hmm. that for me that was a big factor with uh, not being hydrated enough throughout the day. Um, you know, really brought my energy levels down on top of not getting to sleep. And so I had to cut like anything caffeine wise for me after 12 mm -hmm. was just problematic when it would, it would impede okay. on my sleep. My favorite supplement to use when doing this is Organifi's red juice. When I, when I come back, when I cut, when I cut back on caffeine, I replace the mm -hmm. caffeine drinks with Organifi red juice. And it definitely it, takes off the edge. It takes the edge off real nice. So. Okay. I'll definitely look into that yeah. and, and pick that up. Yep. You got it, man. And, and we'll send you maps 15. Do that work. Out. I think that'll be great. <laughs> right, that's program. awesome. Thank you yeah. guys. You got to be a good momentum builder. For yeah. You. Keep us posted, Jeff. I will. Um, I do have a medical appointment on the 13th. So once I get that panel back and take a look, um, I'll email you back and let you know how it's going. Oh, Excellent. you got it, man. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Thanks a lot. You got it. You know, this just highlights that like probably 80% of the time, the answer to your mis you know mysterious question where you're like, what's going on? It's the basics. Yeah. I hate. I know. It, now here's what Occam's I hate about razor. it. razor. Yes. And what I hate about it is when I tell people, I know because this was me. If I heard that, I'd be like, "Oh, come on, really? Yeah. Like, it's not. It's, it's got to be, be some magic uh, food or something. Yeah, like it's got to be something yeah. else that's going on, type of deal. And it's like, man, no. Most of the time, it's like the basic, simple stuff, and it makes a huge difference, you know. And for me, when I surpass about three hundred milligrams of caffeine a day, I crash hard in the afternoon, and then yep. my sleep isn't as good, and then I end up in this kind of like cycle of needing more, thinking I need more caffeine, and feeling worse, and then I got to go through that two week, you know kind of withdrawal period where I, where I start to cut it down. Yep. I wonder too, how much uh, this plays a factor. I noticed this personally myself ever since this business, this is the most sedentary I've ever been in my life. And yeah. this is yeah. the most I've ever had to like actively go and pursue like just movement and activity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there's definitely a direct correlation for me of when I can get in this mode of like just driving to work, coming inside this dungeon, 
talking on the podcast for hours, doing work on the phone or on the computer, then go home and, and or maybe just having one hour of training that, if that's still not enough activity for my body to like feel tired and like mm -hmm. want to go to sleep and then feel re well rested mm -hmm. and then feel energized the next day. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm reminded of that because I'm, I'm back on my kick right now, right? So I'm on like week three going on four here of being really consistent with the diet and training. And one of the things I'm noticing right away is just how well rested I am. My energy levels are getting better and stuff like that. And I think just a lot of that is just my activity has kicked up and my body needs that. Yeah. And I feel so much like I, get, I feel more lethargic and drained doing less stuff, you know? Yeah. For me, it's like being outside. Like you yeah. mentioned the dungeon thing. Like I didn't realize how much that impacts my overall energy and just, uh, uh, you know, vibrancy. It's just like one of those things I just, you feel that the difference when you start pursuing it more. Yeah, that's why I want to put a sunroof in the studio, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Our next caller is Marissa from Canada. Hi, Marissa. How can we help you? Hello. I just want to say thank you to you guys, especially because I started to listen to you guys through my partner. You guys were just in the background, and she always had you guys on in the mornings. So among all the information you've given to us, you've also given her a lot of laughs, which has really helped our relationship. So thank you. Awesome. <laughs> thank Great. you. Great. Uh, my questions, I've got two. Um, they go around mental health as well as eating disorders. First one is, how would you suggest you train specifically for someone who's working through mental health stuff? So dealing with anxiety, depression, we know exercise is great, but like how much aerobic, how much anaerobic sets, reps, amounts, like what would you suggest? Okay, good question. Uh, there's two main things or factors you want to consider when you're trying to exercise to maximize or improve mental health. One is what's good for the body, what's appropriate for the body in terms of overall health. Okay, so not maximum performance, not necessarily like trying to hit, like, you know, get on stage to be a bodybuilder, whatever, but whatever's appropriate for physical, optimal physical health and longevity. And number two, what you enjoy. Those are the two things to consider. And they're both very important. So what's optimal for health? And then what do I like? and see if you can find a crossover between the two. And that's what's going to give you the best improvement in, in mental health. And the reason why there's not a set reps or exercise answer coming from him is because it's going to be extremely individualized. It'll be very different from yeah. person to person. Yeah, some people are going to thrive with a heavier load of training and, and volume and intensity. Other people, you're going to have to dramatically reduce the intensity and volume, it really is going to be a case by case. And it really is all about, you know, putting forth a plan and then feeling them out on how they feel. How are they liking it? How are they sleeping? How is their energy throughout the day? And getting that feedback to then adjust the programming based on that. Now, now, now that I said those two things, Marissa, I'm going to get a little bit more granular, but I wanted to make sure I said those two things because uh, if I say this next thing first, people tend to ignore those first two things, but those are the most important. Okay. So here's the next thing. It, there is a short-term positive uh, effect from exercise. There's also a long-term one, which is the more impor important one, right? Over time, exercise makes us feel better and better and better. But there's also this short-term effect, right? Where you, you, you do some movement, you exercise, you get these positive feel-good catecholamines, um, endorphins, hormones get positively affected. So con to con when you consider that, you're better off doing frequent small workouts than you are with longer infrequent workouts to the point where when I would work with people with their therapist, so sometimes I would get clients towards the end of my career, I got really good and I'd work with clients who then would also allow me to work with their therapist. We would break up their workouts. So they would do like 10, 15 minutes, two or three times a day. So instead of doing like an hour, you know, four days a week or, you know, 45 minutes every day, they would do like short, frequent workouts because they would get those boosts in feel-good chemicals. Movement is medicine. Throughout the mm -hmm. entire day. So like, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the morning of something, 10, 15 minutes in the afternoon, then 10, 15 minutes before bed. Now, what that looks like, again, you got to consider those first two things. But again, to get more granular, um, the, end, the workouts at the end of the day probably want to be more relaxing than the workouts at the beginning of the day. So the beginning of the day can be more high-intensity type stuff. At the end of the day, it's more like yoga, static stretching, that kind of stuff. Because you then, what you don't want to do is 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 uh, you know impede on sleep quality, right? Bring bring yourself down. Super cool, cool. Thank you. 
Second question was, how would you suggest that I train while I'm working through an eating disorder? So I've got history of binge eating, overeating. I've been working with therapists. Uh, like last year, I worked intensively four months every single day with them. So it's getting way better. But the reality is it still happens. So is there something I can do while I'm still working? This, that like if I'm coming off of a binge, something I can do to then s- adjust, like should I be adjusting my training at all? Um, yeah. and is there a way that based off of what I ate too much of or like, w- is there anything I can do to make that easier as I go along this journey? Yeah. So there's, so uh, this is again, human psychology. <clears throat> you can't not do something, but you can do something. I'll give you an example. Don't think of an elephant. Uh, well, now you're thinking of an elephant, right? So what you don't want to do is work out and be like, I'm going to do this to stop obsessing about food because you'll just obsess about food. So the, the best strategy is to take your focus and putting on something else. And in my experience, performance and strength are the best thing to focus on because it's hard to abuse yourself with food um, and also and get stronger, also improve performance. So try to take your focus and say, okay, with my workouts, my goal is to get stronger. Like I'm not going to think about anything else. If I'm getting stronger, I'm doing great. Move your focus in that direction and that typically will help especially if you're working with a therapist alongside. Yeah, as much of an objective focus as you can. So if it's like some of the major compound lifts, if you can just like use that as a, an opportunity to really learn how to sharpen the skill and, and the mechanics and the technique of it, or, you know, even go a little bit further and learn a, a different type of a, an unconventional type of an yes. exercise, you know, something that's going to challenge you, take your thought process completely out of like aesthetics, out of, you know, what your body is, um, you, you know, receiving from this. It's more about the actual metrics and about the technique and, and you know, challenging your, your yourself to, to be in that state of learning and, and kind of like be a student in the gym instead of like really, uh, you know, obsessing over all that other stuff. This is where I love the teaching somebody these weird unconventional things, the Turkish get ups, the bottom up presses, the circus press, the windmill. These are all great movements that are so unique and a lot of people don't train them. And I think getting almost obsessed with the, the, the art of the movement. So even more so like when they both say performance, I prefer to say like movement. Like I'd rather you obsess about the movement than even, cause I don't even want you obsessing over like, Oh, am I adding weight or not adding weight? Or like, yeah. am I getting stronger? Like, uh, cause that's under performance. I care less about that. Like just get so good at this movement. Let's learn this new Turkish get up. You've never done before. Let's break it down in the eight different steps and let's hyper focus on how well it looks and like, and, and like judge that. So I think focusing on, on unconventional lifts, this is a really cool time to do that to kind of distract you from the other stuff. Yeah. So in other words, uh, don't weigh yourself. Don't focus on how you look, focus on what you're doing in the gym. Am I getting better at it? Cool. Does that make sense for you? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So considering both things, they both are the first question and the second question are actually pretty closely related. So, um, I think a great way to work out for you would be to do these kind of short, daily workouts and within the workouts, am I getting better? Am I maybe getting stronger? Am I improving my stability? Am I learning the skill better? And that should accomplish both things that you asked. Cool. Can I ask one more question on top of that? Sure. Sure. So if I think I'm at the point where I'm like verge of overtraining as I like I literally, I, I try to work out my, my goal for myself is do 30 minutes of movement a day. Um, and I will, I'll focus on more always been more of a functional trainer kind of person. Some days it's playing soccer, some days it's a hike, but like, it's just like my focus is 30 minutes of movement. Um, but I feel like I might be hitting the point because I'll use movement to manage my anxiety. So that way I'm settled enough so I can function, but I feel like I'm then a potential on the verge of overtraining because yeah. like my body will just then crash. So is there like, do you think that those 15 minutes will help? Like, should I just be bringing down weights? And if I'm really tired, should I be focusing gotta, more on? You got to adjust the types of training that you're doing then. Sounds like you're doing a lot of intensity type stuff. So yoga, mobility, stretching, um, slow walks, like that's all activity. That's all under the umbrella of what we're talking about. You have to train yourself appropriately. If your go-to for anxiety is to exhaust yourself through intense exercise, you will hit a wall. So you have to modify and uh, manipulate the intensity and the type of exercise so that it always remains appropriate. 
Super cool. Yeah, I think if you obsess about the movement of the Turkish get up or the windmill and you're not worried about the like just pushing yourself. Yeah, getting stronger, lifting way more weight, and you're just focused on the beauty of the, sure. the movement, you're probably not gonna overtrain. It's if you go approach that with this intensity of, oh, I can do more. Oh, I can go harder. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can do more. And and oh, I can go longer. Like if you have that attitude going into it, like that's where you get in trouble with the over application of, of yeah, intensity. You sound like somebody like structure. So I'll give you a little loose structure. Okay. Every other day you do kind of a workout and every other day you do something that's recuperative, recuperative, like uh yoga or mobility sauna or something plunge. along those lines. Right. Yeah. So every other day, recuperative, every other day, a mm -hmm. little bit more intensity that, that type of structure should help you. Okay. Super cool. You got thank it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And thanks to your partner, huh? Tell her, thank you for uh, oh, introducing yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Thanks for calling in. Bye. Uh, you know, I like that more and more people are identifying the mental health benefits of exercise. Yeah. Uh, because I think that's one of the most understated things. Yeah. But the reality is it's one of the most profound. So needed right now. It's too. the most profound effects you get from proper exercise are the mental health benefits. And you don't, people don't learn this until they do it for a long time, or at least realize it. If you ask people who've been working out for 10 years consistently, yeah. that's, they'll always say that that's the number one reason why they keep doing it. It's the mental benefits. Yeah, and it's funny. And Adam kind of nailed it in terms of like um, really focusing on the movement, the sharpness, the um, the fluidity of it. Like I, I like to do that every now and then just to kind of get outside of my own head and, and really just like take that mental – break totally. from just being so hard on myself and just like really like getting in the flow of, of, you know, how to, how to like focus on exercising and, and doing something different, completely out of the normal. I love that. I mean, selfishly, it was something that I obsessed about as a, as a trainer for a very long time per for myself. And so it was something that I teach clients, especially in this situation. I think that's the key when you're, when you're pursuing it for mental health is understanding that, uh, it, again, like we've always talked about more isn't always better. Right. So like, Oh, if, uh, training is good for mental health, then I should do it every day or I should do uh, yeah, an hour. abusing it like a drug. Right, right. right. And so then it, then it actually has the, the adverse effect uh, that you're trying to get from it. So I think that understanding that it's not always about the, the intensity and how much you do and, and progressing necessarily in the weight and getting stronger all the time. In this case, it's like really working with your body and using it as more of a recuperative. So I love the prescription you gave her. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you with so many of your health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find me on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And you can find Adam on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 